Kelly, please settle down so we start. Can we please settle down? Good morning once again, and you are all welcome to this wonderful ceremony. We want to begin. And so we'll call Nancy Banta from the Obwasi campus to give us the opening prayer. Oh, please, let's put our hands together for her. Good morning, everyone. Uh, please, shall we close our eyes to pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We are grateful for a beautiful morning, for bringing us back here after seven, eight weeks. It's been a long journey. People have traveled from far and near. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for our facilitators. We thank you for MasterCard. And we thank you for seeing us through this program and bringing us to a successful end. Father, as we go through this closing ceremony, we pray asking that you will be our guide. You see us through. Help us to have a successful closing ceremony. And in the end, all glory and honor will be given unto you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So just for fun, can I see those from cohort one? And then those from cohort two. Welcome address the chairman of the MasterCard program in KNUSD. And I'm waiting for everybody to get seated. So he is the former, former vice chancellor of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the best university in the world. And so let's put our hands together and welcome Professor William Otu Ellis. That's Mr. Corrid Logan, the director of e-learning, Professor Pewasanti, the director of UITS, Engineer Afo, our facilitators who have supported us in this project, our principals from various institutions. Can we see you by now? I wanted to be sure whether I can recognize some of them. You can recognize me. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Yes, and I said I'll visit you. <laughs> and I came. I wish you that I'm a trustworthy man. <laughs> Thank you very much and welcome. Please, we are very honored to have you here. We thank God for you being here. Our distinguished participants, staff of e-learning, and the staff of the project. Good morning, and I want to say welcome to everyone. I bring you greetings from the management of the university, the vice chancellor and his team are having some very important meetings. So we are stepping in to do uh, the job. 
I want to say that this is not the closing ceremony. For me, this is the beginning ceremony. Yes, and it's very, very important. Sometimes we say closing ceremony, which means that when we go, we are going to sleep and everything ends. But this is the beginning ceremony. It is a great honor to have you back again to the campus of PN West. For some past weeks, as about seven or eight weeks now, or those times, we gathered here to start a journey. And the journey was to explore opportunities in the virtual space. Towards our core responsibilities as institutions and as academics. In the times that we live in, the virtual space has become very important. It has become a very important field, even if you are not, you want to say you are not in. Look at the Russia-Ukraine war. And then you realize that the virtual space is now a very important space. For those of us in academia, it is and has become a part of us. Issues like artificial intelligence is moving beyond the boundaries to the extent that academics are resigning from their positions because they are getting scared as to what they can do with artificial intelligence. Electronic learning has become a part of us. The use of the internet is something that is transcending our, our imaginations and thoughts. And issues like connectivity have become a challenge for managers of institutions and we ourselves who work within these institutions. Whether we like it or not, these are things that we need to grapple with. We also had COVID-19, which came with these challenges. But then, it gave us some opportunities. The opportunity was to get us to start thinking and reflecting. One was, how do we address these challenges? How do you deal with the issue of large class sizes? How do you deal with the issue of teaching outside the lecture room? These were real issues. Uh, today, sometimes you see that they say that the best university in Ghana, the number one institution in Ghana, this and that, and all that. I laugh. I like it, but I don't like it. Because you can go to an institution, they don't even have equipment, but they are the third university in Ghana. <laughs> but uh, we are joking, we are just making a mockery of ourselves. Why? Because it is our virtual space that somebody is sitting somewhere and then is evaluating us based on the virtual space. But the person has not even come to your campus to see some of these things. I remember when we were going around, Brekum, uh, is Brekum here? Yes. Yes. When I got to Brekum, I was shocked. I was shocked to the core. I told myself, this is a university. It is not a college, it is a university. <laughs> I hope you have not brought it down, but you have gone now. It is a university. Because when they welcomed me, they took me to a small room, and then they put me through their virtual space. They projected Brikum, what they stand for, their vision, their mission. I sat down and I said, wow. The issue is that they had a very good board. Mr. Fa, Dr. Fa was their uh, board chairman or council chair. He's a very exposed guy. He translated a lot of things. But irrespective of that, it is the staff who were doing the core things. When we went around, I was looking at the place. Then I, you know what I was asking myself? I'm coming from here in West and I'm looking at these people, and we are coming to partner with them. We have to overtake them. We cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't mentor an institution that uh, virtually is, uh, is sitting on top of you. You have to sit on that institution. But we also draw some, drew some lessons from Brikum. I went to Borga. I was fascinated. So some of your institutions are very good. But the interesting thing is that 
you may be there and they will tell you that maybe uh, Nalerigu. Uh, when I got to Nalerigu, I was very mad. If I had the power, I would have shut it down. But today, I'm sure that Nalerigu is not the same Nalerigu that I went to see. You think, eh? Yes. They've made progress. Yes, I expect that. I'm not done playing institutions. I've left the seat for 19, 2016. It's almost seven years now. If you are still the same, then we have a problem. But I know you are not the same. But I'm drawing to a point. The point is that Nalerigu can become the second best health training institution in Ghana. And Brekum can become the hundredth institution. The difference is what? The virtual space. So some of the things we are doing here has implications. And we need to take it serious. Whether you're a principal, whether you're a staff, you need to take it serious. So when the COVID came, we were all grappling with what we can do. Some institutions had some resources, and therefore they were ahead. Others had to follow. But we needed to address the issue of capacities, and we needed to address the issue of resources. So even when you have materials, your people need to know how to use or be counted. And these are realities. Then there was the need to explore the opportunities that were out there so that it could help us address these challenges. You and myself, we are all in academia. We know that money is a problem. Mm -hmm. ah, it's, it's a problem, yes. I hope you'll not be going on strike very soon. Yes. So we needed to address the challenges of capacity and fiscal fiscal infrastructure. But you needed a financial muscle to be able to do that. If you don't have it, there's nothing you can do. Then came a call from MasterCard, and the call was on e-learning. So by the grace of God, a few people put their heads together, put their thoughts together. And God being so good, we were successful. And today, we started the journey, and the journey was that we should bring together some distinguished people and then start charting the path. So I was very happy. I wasn't there when you started, but I was very happy what I heard, that some important people from important institutions had gathered, and they said they want to chart a new course. And I've been following. One of the key things we wanted to address or achieve is capacity building. And for me, I'll be very sad. I'm hoping that I'll get another opportunity to visit some schools. And I'll be very, very sad if I come to the schools and I don't see anything. I'm a minister of the Church of Pentecost. I'm in charge of the children's uh, ministry. So I go around. Recently, I was at uh, Chifopraso, where I slept. The, sc the school was just opposite the mission house. And so, next time I visit, I will sleep at Chifopraso's health training school. And then I'll have an opportunity to see what has become of what we have all decided to do. So today, we have gathered here to showcase the outputs and outcomes of what we all decided or agreed. That is the journey into the virtual space. And it is the beginning. It is not actually the closing ceremony, like I have said. Before I continue, I want us to clap for ourselves. <laughs> you have done very, very well. But there's another thing. When they say clap, sometimes we all like clapping. If you didn't do the work, <laughs> redraw your clapping. <laughs> because then you don't need to clap. So 
Well done. Uh, you are better than me, miles away. So you have done very well. But in clapping, it means that we have something to show. So today we'll be here and then we'll follow to see what you have done by yourself. But through this journey, there are a few things that I would like to highlight. I'm sure you may be conscious of it. One is that in our interaction coming here, we have made new friends. We have made new friends. I was sitting at the back and I was watching how people were greeting and touching, rubbing the back of people and all that. And I said, ah, nobody rubbed my back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a signal that we have made friends. The other thing is that through the journey, we have also acquired new knowledge, which I think we'll all agree. Uh, it has also helped us to learn new things. The other aspect is that it has helped us to transfer knowledge. You see, even KNUSC is learning from you. We are learning a lot from you. In the same way, as we transfer, you also do what? Transfer to us, yes. We learn how to organize people from different places. We learn how to look at people with different temperaments. Uh, Brikum is different from Bogatanga. Bogatanga is different from people Praso. We did a project, a UN project, and then we were looking at lifestyles and things. And very interesting. We brought farmers from northern region to eastern region. Farmers who grow yams. In the eastern region, as a Sawa area, they put the mounds in the soil. So the yam grows downwards. So when you want to harvest, you have to dig down, 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 down to get to the teeth before you can harvest. If you are not able to do it well, when you move it, it will break. So when those from the North came, they just looked at this people and they said, ah, are these people correct? <laughs> How can you do, I mean, spend so much energy digging and going down? So I was looking at them. Then we took the Eastern region people to the North. And when they got to the North, they realized that these people, they form mounds and then put the seedling in. And they also stood there and said, ah, we could do better. And life would be easier. So we transfer what? Knowledge. So such a gathering, that is what it does. But the more important thing is that we have done this and acquired these things individually. The challenge we have is to translate it from the individual level to the institutional level. And this part is very important for me. Because it is one of the key reasons why we are doing this. Some of us will go and our principles will become barriers. And therefore, we'll see that we are frustrated. They are not giving us space to do this. They are not giving us this to do that. So we are frustrated. I want to tell you that it happens everywhere. Even in your marital home, your husband can be a big barrier. And men are like that. We are barriers <laughs> together with our children. Mm. Well, don't you cook for us? You cook. Don't you talk with us? You talk. You get angry with us, but you still come back. And back. But women are the most terrible barriers. <laughs> But in the midst of that, but in the midst of that, how dare a man go and tell a woman that you are the most terrible barrier? <laughs> so every man is walking quietly when you ask, oh, my wife is there. The, 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 you fear. The power is in the hands of the lady, so you keep quiet. But in the midst of all these things, we fought ahead. So please, when you go, and there's a barrier. I, I am a food scientist. I'm a microbiologist as well. We have something we call the header concept. You place one header, you jump, they place another. That's how we mitigate against microbes and other things. It's one of the approaches. 
It's the same in life. One barrier will come. Will join. Even coming here, people have gone through barriers. But to far as there is always mourning, it means that there's an opportunity every time for us to be able to do something new. There are some of us who there is no barrier. We are just lazy. We are just what? Lazy. If you are like that today, repent. Yes. If you are like that today, repent. But the good thing about this project is that you always have an opportunity to call back for support. So if you start something and you cannot make your, you cannot make the headway, what do you do? Call. And there will be a backup system to come and help you do what you have to do. I was giving 10 minutes. I'll just end. The last one, the last one is the most terrible one. They are destroyers of systems. They are very good. They know the thing. But always you have to come and beg them. They want to feel important every time. It's a dangerous thing. Every time you want to feel important. So when they are even sharing information with you, they share it a little bit, then they keep the rest. They share it a little bit, then they keep the rest. They, because every time you have to come and say, oh, boss, we have reached here, can you come? Oh, but this is simple. We should press this day. And when they are teaching you, they do it very fast. I hope you understand that there is God. When you are like that, the sad thing is that you don't make impact. Everybody says that this guy is good. Yes, you go to his or her institution, no impact. Because the impact is inside the person. Please, if we are in any of these categories, this morning, as we begin the new journey to infect our institutions, let's do what? Change. I'll be very happy, and we'll discuss it uh, as a project team. The institution that will make, take the strides based on their participants who are here, we will think about something and come and do it for the institution. On this note, I want to thank you, and we wish ourselves all the best for today's meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. So it's no longer a closing ceremony, it's the beginning ceremony. Uh, before we continue, I want to acknowledge the presence of Professor Victoria Baum. She's the head of nursing department in KNUSD. Thank you so much for coming. And we want, also want to acknowledge our heads of institutions, our principals and their reps. And we all know that without their support, this wouldn't have been possible. A lot of us wouldn't have come. So when I mention their names, please let's clap for them and show them our gratitude. Is that okay? Yes. Are we agreed? Yes. Cohort 2, I'm not feeling you this morning at all. Rather Cohort 1. Uh, I agree. I think I'm an affiliate of Cohort 1. Yeah. Okay, so our first principal is Alaji Bwashi Adam Abdul Karim. He is the principal for NMTC Second D. And then we have Awa Obawa, principal for NTC Laura. We have Olivia Poma, principal for NTC Nkoko. And then Elizabeth Riafe, principal for NMTC Atibi. Atibi. Gabriel Sofo, Principal's Rep for NMTC 37 Military Hospital. Thank you for coming. And we have Noella Anglari, Principal for NTC Jurapa. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. We have Winfred Yao Akapo, Rector for Spiritan University College. And then Theresa Abina Enchi, Principal for NMTC Teshi. Thank you. We have Tira. Haruna, principal for NMTC Bolling 
Wow, thank you for coming. Vincent Tanyi, principal for NNTC Jurapa. Thank you. Joyce Ohene, principal for PMTC Jaya Kwanta. Thank you very much. Cecilia Ando, principal for NMTC Esiama. We have Alice Abukai Agana, principal for CHNTC Navrongo. Then we have Christiana Amamba, principal for MTC Bogatanga. Thank you. We have Chimaima Akon, principal for principal for NMTC Cape Coast. Thank you very much. Rita Ejebuache, rep for the principal of HFNMTC Brekum. Thank you for coming. Mavis Mensa, rep for the president of Garden City. Thank you. And then we have Mary L. Bosomche, principal, um, principal of Koforidia NMTC. Thank you very much. Stella Sapoma, upon principal for NMTC Triple Brasso. And then I'll bet Topoku, principal for NMTC Tepa. Thank you very much. Please, if you are a principal here and you haven't signed yet, kindly see Auntie Kemi and let us register your presence. Thank you all for coming. And we want to invite the, the head of e-learning to come and tell us about the journey so far. Let's put our hands together for Professor Eric Apoasante. Good morning, the dear former Vice Chancellor and Chairman for MasterCard, and of course, Chairman for this occasion, Professor William Ogulutu Ellis. Principals who have gathered here, don't be worried if the lights are going off, it's for a purpose. Director UITS, Registrar of Legion's Office, Facilitators. Our dear participants and of course our friends from the media, I want to once again say good morning to you all. Uh, we are so excited to see the faces again. Uh, when you started checking in, one of the words that I mean kept ringing and uh, ringing in our, my memory was cohort one, cohort two, <laughs> and then I mean the the statement and the sentiment that I realized that all the teachings we were doing were miseducated. I think that this really is, uh, as our dear chairman indicated, is one of the targets for the, the training that we have done. Community of practice. And for us, it's also very, very important. We've had all of us on a common platform where things that are of mutual benefit are shared. And of course, beyond this training, any practice that is related to e-learning is shared so that we can gain and practice in this area without being handicapped. And therefore, we are so excited about this. My job this morning is to just do a, a little retrospective reflection of what we have done so far. And I have the lights off because I'm going to show some video of the journey so far. But let me just do a, a quick run through the first two weeks. I'll pause for us to watch the video of how we, we we fed during the training, and then we'll continue from there. So from the 8th of uh, May through to 19th May, we had the privilege of meeting um, these great minds who have gathered here this morning and who offered entirely their personalities and cognitive capacities to learn and also to, to um, avail themselves to go and impact their institutions, both from affiliate institutions and from KNUST, main campus in Opuase. We appreciate you so much. You want to clap for yourself for this. So within that two weeks, we went through what we call master class. And it rings and resonates with MasterCard. It is to make us masters in this field. 
and it is a class that has the target of training us to be online pedagogists so that we are able to deliver our content online very well. That's the first one. And then also to be able to have some level of exposition. And I'm saying level of exposition because it's a whole huge area of um, specialization, instructional designing. So some level of exposition to instructional designing. So as we speak now, we can confidently say that we have trained ourselves to be competent in online pedagogy. And we've had some exposure to instructional designing. This is good. You may clap. And so within that first two weeks, we um, went through a course called, and when I mention the name of the course, I'm sure the picture of the facilitator would immediately come to mind. So I'll mention the facilitator who is also here as well. Uh, so you recall that we took a course in online student success. Do you remember online student success? Yes, that was the first uh, course that we took. It was handled by our dear Dr. Samuel Enchi. I saw Dr. Samuel Enchi here. Doc is at the back there, yes. yes. Dr. Enchi was in cohort, uh, cohort one. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we have Dr. Kilson. Dr. Kilson, for a reason, is not here at the moment. But Dr. Kilson was in cohort two. That tells where the tilt is going, right? Cohort one is here, cohort two is not here. <laughs> I'm not being biased. <laughs> okay. And then we had the second model, which was the course content and quality. Course content and uh, course quality. Uh, that was handled, I took course content. Course quality. <laughs> that was in cohort. All right, okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> For cohort two, um, it was also handled by Mr. Christopher Ado for a very crucial reason. You know, this week <laughs> he's not here at the moment. This is not deliberate. <laughs> cohort two, we still believe in you. <laughs> so he's not here as well. But that was a very important model. Then, <laughs> then for model three. Three, we took effective students' interaction, and our very dear uh, Dr. Rosemary Jenny handled that. Yes. <laughs> she took cohort one through that. Cohort two was handled. <laughs> this, I'm surprised about this trend. I'm just observing that all this, all this is happening to cohort two. <laughs> So two was handled by, yes, our friend, uh, Mr. Abiku Arthur, uh, who is not here. <laughs> who is not here. Yeah, but his, his representative is here. <laughs> We're having our SRC elections today, and so he's very engaged, very, very engaged, because he works uh, directly under the UITS, and so, um, his boss is here, he can't be here. <laughs> yes. So for the second week, we, we still went ahead to do the instructor presence and action plan. This time I'll mention cohort two first. <laughs> so cohort two was handled by our very revered friend, uh, Professor Nana Eusi Mensa. <laughs> I sat in his class and I enjoyed it. Ah, I said, ah, very interesting. And then uh, God one was handled by my good brother, John Foucault. <laughs> yes, that was for model four. Model five was handled, uh, the course was course design and content development. This was very important because it ushered us into why we are here. So that was handled by, um, for cohort one, it was handled by Dr. Obed Broom, who is not here this morning because of a conference marking. Uh, but for 
cohort two, um, Dr. Jansis Enu, who is here, a humble yet. These two weeks obviously was very intensive. We had a lot of engagement. I remember that most of us were coming uh, to the workshop with scripts that you were marking. I saw them and I said, oh, lecturers and <laughs> history. But we understand adult learning and so we're able to, with disabled facilitators, uh, keep you on and on. And we believe that the impact was great. It's a good time to pause to give you a few reflections of what happened in the two weeks. Very summarized uh, video and then we'll continue from there. So. So they're getting us the, the sound, but maybe we can. Surprises. We have learned something exciting about using uh, um, softwares or apps to help you engage your students in class. I've learned about using Google Doc for assignment and quizzes. I've also learned about using Flip to engage students in peer-to-peer -peer interaction. This has been a very exciting and insightful workshop, uh, particularly about the activities we are doing here. 
Uh, what I'm so much excited about is um, effective student interaction. In my view, the students we have these days are so much involved in their, with their mobile phones and internet. If you are able to engage our students to interact with the use of internet and IT, I believe that our classes and our content are going to be very much interesting. We involve them, we engage them, and it's exciting. Before I came, I wanted um, a content, course content that will include my students, that will interact with my students and also make my students uh, more involved because they have been telling me that the uh, anatomy is quite uh, difficult and they fear it. I wanted to take that away and this workshop came in. For the past few weeks I've engaged with the learners here about uh, promoting instructor presence in their online activities. What has stood out for me is how engaged and how willing uh, participants have been. They've, they've, they've been eager to try everything that we've introduced to them and they've showed great motivation to learn. So we've had several practice sessions where they've had the opportunity to develop self uh, introductory videos for their lectures, to develop uh, course summary videos to help their online learners and they've been really interested in participating in all of this. They've indicated their willingness to go back to their institutions and practice what has been taught and um, we are also ready to work with them over the next seven weeks to eight weeks to help shape their content for online delivery. myself as a student to see how the students feel when we are instructing them. And of course, I have come to see a lot of issues that students go through. One of the challenges that I have personally seen that they are going to face is finding the right technology and the right setting to develop their content. For instance, uh, when they were trying to develop course introductory videos, how to use technology like even their laptop to record themselves and finding the right place to sit to minimize background noise, etc. is always challenging. to 
use variety of apps or tools to engage their students. I'm sure uh, they'll be able to help their students better uh, to learn. It's exciting to be here. And I, I know that when I go, I'm going to include it in my content, um, course content, and I know that my students are going to enjoy it and probably take away the fear and make uh, my students understand anatomy and physiology well. And we hope that by the end of this uh, training or workshop, we are going to be able to create our own course content. We are so much grateful to the organizers, our facilitators, and everybody who has made this uh, training a success. We thank you all. Bye. So I believe that going forward, we have to look at uh, building more institutes across tertiary institutions in Ghana so that those learners who are motivated and willing to embrace these uh, online learning techniques can have the space in the academy to do this. And I believe that we owe it to ourselves and to our students to continue to build this capacity and to continue this good initiative into the future. Thank you. hours and why this is important is that we want all of us who do online pedagogy to 
make room for such you know provisions office hours is the way to say that you are offering tutorial support like you would have done in person so if you were you know lecturing in person you would want to make room for the student to have access to you discuss their issues and the rest and so we, we dub this office hours in online learning and we we're glad that our dear friend um, who is moderating this morning's section, Dr. Linda Mwakubani, coordinated the office hours for us very effectively. Doc, uh, let me use this opportunity to thank you. Um, on the fourth week was supposed to be campus visits. That is still in deficit. And we took advantage of that period to uh, call a few people to see how you are faring on your campuses. But it's, we're looking forward to come to the various campuses to appreciate the on-site issues and then also uh, update the training and, uh, and, and attend to that. The fifth week um, was for online seminar for the presentation of your draft model. And I'm glad to report that you all did well. Everybody um, reported, joined the presentation and showed us the progress at the time. The sixth week, you were able to submit your model. Uh, when I say you were, if you didn't submit exactly on the sixth week, my mother would say, yes, I want. <laughs> so, but we had a good number of people submitting their initial model for review, and the monitoring evaluation team, headed by our dear Professor Winston Abrampa, um, did a very good work of reviewing the initial model, a very independent team. Um, looked at the model, made inputs at the time that the initial submissions were made, and then um, we were able to submit it back to you for you to rework on it. The seventh week, um, we moved into submission of your models to write the final model, and then we started journeying on populating the model onto the LMS. You could see that each of these had some timelines that we were using to monitor, to check how we were able to pace. We are very much aware of fast learners and slow learners, and therefore we know that just one or two people delayed a bit, but all in all, we had a very good um, turnout as far as the submission rate was concerned. Where we are now is that we are looking forward to having everybody Putting your model, which you have developed and has been quality assured, onto the learning management system. Um, we have about 50% of that success. Um, we still have about 23 of you who are yet to put your models onto the learning management system. A call to some of you indicated that you just had some challenges in terms of time trying to clear some examinations and other things. We need that done as early as possible and so that we can um, get you entirely cleared. Then you can start the training as our dear uh, Gemma indicated. So please do well to revisit that. There's a team that is already, even whilst we are here, monitoring the LMS. And we see that whilst you are here, some are still populated, which is still fine. One of the uh, participants said that they experience what the students are experiencing and so we came to appreciate it very well. So we're looking forward for that to be done so that we can declare clearance for all of you to have gone through this. So dear chairman, this is the journey so far and we want to appreciate you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Court one. We are here. Cohort two, you are also here. <laughs> okay, okay, so at, at this time, I know we've gone over, we still remember some of the fun times and things, but I want to invite two principals, well, three principals, two principals and three participants to give us their feedback, tell us what they experienced, the challenges, the highlights, what is currently happening in their institutions. And so since our principals are here, they are mothers and fathers, and they are going to help us, I think we'll start with them. The first to come will be Alaji Bwashi Adobabdu Karim. Please come and give us some. 
tell us something. What's going on so far? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And I also want to take this advantage and thank Professor Ellis. 2014, he visited in Totroso Nursing College. The school had not even been opened. So when Professor came with my board chair, who happens to be the council member, Nana Sarah Mensa. Prof just told me that, Bwachi, go to Brekum, and I believe you can start the school. In fact, there was no access road to the school. It was only buildings. And I can say that by the grace of God, in Totoso, to have a representation here. <laughs> However, I've been transferred. I'm now speaking from second day. That is the product. Uh, we had affiliations in 2014, 2013, 2014. That is when the pressure of affiliating to a university comes in. So at that time, Professor Ellis was the VC. Uh, Honorable Shelley Aite Meheso, rest in perfect peace, was the Minister of Health. She did very well for our institutions to come to on board and the results is what we are seeing now. In fact, Professor Ellis visited so many schools and when he was talking, I was sort of thinking about coming to a school. It was Tipper Truck Road, like Bush, and he visited us. We had affiliations and we were talking. We don't see anything from KUSD. We are not seeing anything. What is the affiliation for? And there's no better time than this. When we met around 2021 at Koforubia, and Professor Nkrumah and Professor Zomeku attended the conference. And we talked to them about our feelings and the association, the marriage that we are not very happy. But he said, wait, you see something. And later part of last year, we started seeing some things. And now what we are seeing is marvelous. It's marvelous because when we started talking about MasterCard, MasterClass, and all those things, e-learning, looking back at 2020, COVID-19 and the learning, virtual learning, virtual teaching. We, some of us, we closed down the school and have nothing to do. We're buying a lot of credit for our teachers to teach online. And the teacher will take the credit and tell you that I couldn't get in touch with the students. And for now, with the E class and the content creation, we visited the university facilities and it gave us a lot of inspirations. And when we returned to second day, our tutors who took part briefed our tutors who were not there. And I want to say that, in fact, Oliver, and we were told that the next September, you are going to invite students or involve students. But I want to suggest and pray that the students will complete school and go, but the tutors will be there. So in as much as we are adding the students, please, secondly, we had to, we want to add three. <laughs> so I want to say that the tutors should be more trained because uh, me, for instance, when I took over secondly, the students were 400. But because of virtual learning, as I speak now, my students are 1,300. And we believe that if we are able to sustain this project, we can have a lot of students off campus and the pro there will be no problem with teaching and learning. Because in the nursing profession, when students are at home and they go to clinic and they can be I mean, taught all the time, I think there will be no problem. But the clinical experience too is very important. And with this e-learning, nobody here can tell me that without the e-learning, we can complete our syllabus before exam. So normally we don't complete exams, I syllabus before exam. But if we manage to use this system very effectively, 
while students are at home, we can continue teaching them and we will finish our syllabus because our exams are central exams. The council and the university is only looking at our syllabus and set the questions. And if we are able to complete our syllabus, we will have a good students. On the very brief note, I want to say that the e-learning has come to stay and we at second day are preparing for a studio and we invite you to come and help us build our studio. And I want to address that. All our principals will do so. We are very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alaji. Please let's welcome Theresa Abnenchi from NMTC Techi. Thank you very much. I will not reiterate what my colleague has said, but I want to extend my appreciation to KNUST. Some of you may not know, you only hear about KNUST not giving us what you are supposed to get. But I always say I owe KNUST a very great gratitude. Because when we our students at that time, I was then a tutor at Nelson Midwifery Training College, Kolebu. When our students were dictating for a diploma certificate from universities, nobody came to our aid. I remember very well. That was as late as 2006. By then, Legon has graduated our first cohort, and the rest were left stranded. But Professor Ellis, with his counsel, came to our aid. So I always tell people that we should not forget where we came from, where we are, and where we are going to. Thank you very much. Even as we are here, we are emphasizing blended learning. But I can tell you we are moving from blended learning to virtual learning because there are other competing factors that will not just allow us, it will get to a point that we cannot have face-to-face -face interaction like this. I played with the University of um, Pamukuma, University of Science and Technology. There are barriers, as Professor Ellis stated. And one of our barriers, you may not agree with me, is our IT managers in our institutions. Some of us, we are always open to learn. So we seek um, uh, uh, um, uh, advice, skills from our children, who are also products from this university, and they encourage us. So we pray and hope that when our tutors, who have just participated in this institution, call on you, please support us, so that we can go around that barrier, because we've been going around. We have the e-learning model in our institution since 2019, just before the COVID. But we we'll plead with you that there are some features, such as the levels, the discussion rooms, and so forth and so forth, so that you can add those things to our e-learning platform, and together we'll champion your cause. Forever leave KNUST, forever leave health training institutions, Forever leave our tutors who are dedicated, but they are not seen. But I believe you'll be rewarded. But before I leave, I learned uh, there are some you know, packages that, but I'll plead with you. Teshi, we are forced to reckon with. Even though I'm a product through and through from Kolebu, I'm not the principal of nursing and midwifery training college, Teshi. And I've taken that skills, attitude, and knowledge to that institution. And we happen to be the, the valetarian for last and year, and this year too will be. So if there is something that you want to set up, use our school, because we don't have anything. We don't even have hostels. We only started with a diploma. But our first grad on 2017, when I took over. But our presence, I'm telling all over the place. So that's all that I will say. Thank you very much. so much. <laughs> you see, advantage of holding the mind. You, when you come, come and ask, oh, you may never know limited. You ask and you get. So for the participants, let's invite Diana Bosom Chiduka from 37 NMTC. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity. Actually, I'm a proud product of cohort one. So briefly, I'm here to give a feedback. And um, 
we would like to say we are grateful. I mean, such opportunities don't come often. And those of us who were chosen, I think we were chosen for a purpose. So we have a mandate. And some of us, we are not motivated because of the awards we'll get, because we'll be recognized, but because we want to be agents of change. I mean, that is some of us. So we'll push very hard and make sure that your dream of making e-learning successful a success in the NTC. We assure you, and we pledge on that. Actually, when we got the letter, I had um, personal experience. I had traveled for a while. I'm a military person, so I was away. And then I came, and I was going to take my leave, and my boss said, ah, I don't know I'm not teaching. There's this course, go, two weeks. I was like, ah, two weeks? Hey, leave my house. I've been away for one year. I come and you say I should go two weeks. And they said it's e-learning. E what? <laughs> you should come with a laptop. You should do this. Ah, what is this? Okay. So we came. Mixed feelings. I saw faces I knew, so it gave me some comfort. And they said it was seven to eight weeks. I said, wow. Seven to eight weeks. So we started, we met the first day, and I remember the very first day, they asked us how we worked during the COVID time. I didn't have any experience, because during the COVID time too, fortunately or unfortunately, I was, I was not around. So when my teachers were saying, and we can't get a teacher, I didn't have any experience. I didn't know, and I'd never used the model to teach, but I'd used it to learn on several courses. So I was, okay, open for ideas, and we started and it was interesting. Different exposures, different things, but time consuming. You have a whole bed to yourself where you can't sleep. <laughs> when you want to sleep small, then the dogs are barking. They say, record a video. Hey, you see, you put your phone here, then the bathroom is showing, you put it here, then the window is showing. Then you, when you finally get a good position, you start recording nice, then you hear, whoa, 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 whoa. You say, I'm so sorry. You gave up. But we came and then the facilitators made a realize that these are the challenges that we would overcome and we would have to, you know, learn, unlearn, and then get through with it. The whole program helped us to become good online instructional designers. Some of us, we just take the curriculum, we just teach it. But when we started going through the repurpose and realized that when you repurpose it very well, whether you are present or not, any teacher can pick it up and we'll be able to teach from beginning to an end. And so we would urge ourselves to repurpose, try and repurpose all our um, subjects and leave it so that when anybody comes, the person can just pick it up. So implementation, we finished, we went home. I want to share my success and I'm very proud of that success because when I wanted to do it, people didn't believe that it was going to be successful. I, we were supposed to do some entrance exams for 1,320 applicants for my school. And I was in charge of it. 1,300, how do we do it? How do we mark? So I sought ideas. And I remember they told us about Google Forms. You can shuffle the questions, you can shuffle the scheme. Okay, so now what? Then I chanced on Safe Exams Browser. Then I went to it. I tried it and tried it. It took me sleepless nights. And I had to sacrifice my, um, uploading my <laughs> V class to do that one. And people said, is it gonna be, I had a lot of, a lot of criticism, a lot of setback. But I don't know, I just set my mind to it that I was gonna do it. And we tried it, we tried it, and it went. I realized that you can merge the Google Classroom, the Google Docs, with a safe exam browser, you do your exams, nobody will have access to it. You can change the password, you can do so much with it, and you can do the exams in various batches. And I sagged my mind, and for four days, I was not sleeping, because I, I wanted to make sure that it was successful to the latter. And I couldn't have done this without Key University. I'm so, so grateful. I'm so, so grateful. And the feedback has been good. On this note, we want to say thank you. We want to thank our principals for giving us the and choosing us. It's going to be difficult, but please support us. 
please support us, give us infrastructure, and we will make our NTCs a better place to teach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our second participant, Eric Mauko Kalai from Pentecost University. Which cohort? Hey. Diana is in cohort one. So the journey here has been wonderful. When I first heard of um, master class and content creation, I was like, what is all this about? And then um, four of us were selected to come here. Myself, I am um, coordinator for Certificate in Theology and Church Administration at the Pentecost School of um, Theology and Mission. I am in charge of the e-learning. And so I was like, what new thing are we coming to learn here? I was quite skeptical. The first day, the second day, and then I realized that I had to sit up and focus. <laughs> At the time where we were to record videos of ourselves and then upload, I thought this was no work. I did it and then the following day, my name was not in the list. <laughs> then it reflected, I realized that these are the same challenges our students have been facing. The training has changed me so much that I am more student focused and I understand their issues more. Back there at our school, we presented to management what we have learned and then how it is going to help our noble institution, Pentecost University. And as I speak now, we have been tasked to develop a model for the school to train all faculties. Then again, we have been tasked to come out with a project for Pentecost University uh, develop, to develop uh, an e-learning center and then with that one we are going to fall on KNUST. <laughs> <laughs> so online student success has become a priority uh, thanks to masterclass and then KNUST. The experience has been wonderful. We thought we knew how to use the uh, Moodle but we have learned more. Thank you for impacting us. God bless you. Okay, so before we go to the last participant, who is from cohort two? <laughs> Let's acknowledge the presence of Patrick Kuma, the registrar for Ensign College. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. So our last participant to give us the feedback is Prof. John Backhan from KNUSD. And he's in cohort too. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm sure I was uh, deliberately selected to, <laughs> <laughs> to give the remarks because of uh, everything I know. I would like to make public. <laughs> My director asked me to speak because of that reason. But on a more serious note, whether we like it or not, this has come to stay. And if we are able to get on board, it makes life easier for, for us. So, I don't have much to say, except to say that let us not stop with the module that we are being paid for, but go ahead to uh, design all our remaining courses and help others to do so. It will make life easier for all of us. That's all I can say. Thank you very much.
okay, we've been sitting for a while. We have been sitting for a while. Um, we are going to go for a snack break. You can... The snack's already set at the restaurant downstairs in the basement. So just go out and go down. We have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Please, please let's go, get up, shake ourselves, eat, and then we'll be back here at 11. Thank you very much. Please let's move out to the basement.
So just before we have the first participant show us the module that he's worked on, we want to call Dorcas Otuye Champo to also give us a feedback. Now this is a special request to balance out cohorts one and two. So please let's clap for Dorcas as she comes. Can Elliot Pagite please prepare to do your presentation? Hello, um, I'm Dr. Sutre Champon, a daughter of a man. Um, for this course, I think it came at the right time. I was working at the theater for the past 22 years, so I decided to this time come to the classroom. And how to go about it was a bit difficult because it's not the same as teaching at the theater and teaching at the operating room. But immediately we came to, uh, we were recruited, we had this course to be, uh, we were orientated to do the uh, course content and it was Wahala. You don't even know where to go about it and this pressure came about. But I can confidently say that I'm not all that good, but I know my way out. I know how to go about things. I can now prepare my content for my course. And with the help of our facilitator, which I always worry her, morning, afternoon, night, I will be calling her. He won't even respond, but he will send a message. But I am sure that when others get this opportunity, they are also going to do a thank you. From now on, I'll be responding, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we are a lot going to do the presentation. So everybody has five minutes. I'll be timing you. I beseech you by the message of God. Please keep to the time. Otherwise, we will not go today. Very first person, Elliot Paddity. Please, five minutes. Thank you very much. Yes, cohort two and Elio two.
Okay, good. So, um, Masterclass gave us a template to work with, and it made things very easy and comfortable working with the framework. Please, can we zoom in a little? So, to repurpose um, my course, which is nursing and midwifery informatics, there were a lot of things I realized that to move to online. Please, I'm from Kofredia NTC, my madam. <laughs> and to repurpose the content, um, there were a lot of things I realized that looking at the framework, I had to change. The style of teaching, the traditional style, could not work for the online teaching. So, please, can we move? Good. So, Yes, the name of the college, uh, Nelson MGP Training College, Preferia Institution. Um, my name, Eliot Isapadite. Please let's go. Yes, the co, let's come down a little. Yes, the co author, my principal, Hajia Mary Lamisi Buzombel. And uh, we are responsible for repurposing the Moodle for online delivery. Most of the things I'll just be saying there is like a questionnaire, if I should put it that way. That you have to understand and then you populate um, to help with the um, uploading onto the V class. And the course details uh, that's a diploma, it's a diploma training college. And this course is for the first years. The contact hours for private hours too. So when you do the math, you get 60 hours. And I had the number of units of study, I had to compress some of them. So in the end, I had seven. I had seven units. OK, so the programs which might include this model, we run three programs. That is the RGN, RM, and the post -Namna. And the prerequisite for the course, you need to have basic computer skills, basic one. And then the ability to communicate effectively in written and oral forms. And the most important thing is you must have an interest in learning how to use data and technology to improve patient care and outcomes. So the aim of the model, the brief description of the model, if I'm to read, I think we waste a lot of time, so I'll be skipping. So let's go to the first unit so that first unit. Getting started. Okay, getting started had to do with introducing the student to the learning environment. And for that, I think I adopted what the outline um, had. That's a framework that we're given. I want the unit one, which starts with the lesson itself. OK, so unit one, this is the first topic, which has to do the concept of nursing with informatics and major historical perspectives of nursing and computers. So the topics that had to be covered, I've provided the intended learning outcomes. These are the structures that we had to follow. And as we were taught, we had to use the Bloom's taxonomy to be able to use these action verbs so that students can be well measured and assessed. So when you come, please come down a little. No. Up. Overview of student activity. So at the end of this unit, you will see You'll be able to, one, describe the concepts of nursing informatics and its framework. And the activity here is a short quiz, class discussion, and where will this activity take place? That will be on the elements. And then the second activity, compare and contrast objective and subjective data in healthcare. And this will be a classroom discussion. Because it's a blended learning pedagogy that we'll be using. So we're having the face-to-face -face and then the online discussion. Three, 
apply the principles of recording and documentation in nursing. And here, we will engage the students in the classroom, they will have practical demonstration, and then there will be a discussion forum on the elements. And then four, evaluate the role of nurses as knowledge workers, that to be a class discussion on the elements. And then five, there will be a presentation and a discussion. So let's go down. So the model outcome addressed in this particular unit is what we have there. Purpose of the unit. Over to you. And this is the unit you will explore next informatics. So the whole idea is that you give the student enough information so that when they are on the V class, they don't find themselves wanting. I remember when I first populated my unit and the officers charged to assist us. He said, this thing is too raw, like the ordinary teacher would do in the classroom. So add more instruction. And as a result of that, we're able to do the uploads well. Madam, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think that going forward, because we're a lot, try to summarize. You don't really have to show us everything. You can tell us how the course has helped you to repurpose, how to state your objectives, how to state the deliverables, what you are measuring, the quizzes you have been able to set, the online apps that you've been able to integrate. If in five minutes you show us just the introductory part and then you give an overview of what you've done, that would be great. But thank you very much, Elliot. That was fantastic. It looks like you've done very great work. Um, before we continue, we want to invite the principal for NMTC, NMTC Shifu Pras, so Stella Sapoma Opong. She has something she wants to say specially. Please let's encourage her with a clap. So as she's speaking, the next person will be um, Kwame Agube. Please get ready. All right. Thank you. Good morning again. I thought when, once we started, we could have gone on and it so come. I am seeing a dream come true, and I'm very much grateful. Uh, last year, the last academic year at Fort Hoi, I was at Fort Hoi NMTC, we decided to start e-learning because of our space. Uh, so I started having a discussion with ministry. It was warm welcome, and they said, discuss with your affiliate institution, and then with NMC. So this is where my challenge is. So I started the discussion with NMC, and uh, the feedback I had was, no, we are not there yet. Having signed my tutors, and even students that we would be doing 30, 70. NMC said we are not there yet. So my question is, now have we had an engagement with NMC? Because they said they are the regulators. They are the, we are using their curriculum. So are we there? I mean, have we had that discussion? Have they now, are they on board with us for us to move on? Otherwise, I don't know, maybe I, I would collapse. But if we are there, then I know that my dream has really come true. So that is something I need. <laughs> okay, we are continuing. We'll get a response soon. So can we have Kwame coming up? Please clap for him. When he gets to your turn, we'll clap for you. Thank you very much. Call two. Um, before I start, I would like to thank KNUSD and MasterCard Foundation for this great opportunity. Not forgetting my principal for giving me the opportunity to attend this workshop. In fact, uh, before I came, uh, I had issues with taking courses online. But one thing I got from this workshop is that I am encouraged to take courses online, which is a great 
uh, game for me. And in fact, I didn't know anything about Moto or putting courses online and then designing and then we when we came for this workshop, a lot of things, the exposure has really impacted me. And so when you look at my course online, if I sit down, my wife look at it and was saying, wow, you've really done well. And so, <laughs> so let's um, from the Presbyterian Midwifery Training College, that is Jerry Kwanza. Uh, I work on medicine and medical nursing, which is for midwifery students. On our campus, we are only offering midwifery course program. A. Please, can you scroll down to my unit one? So basically, the exposure we got from this workshop really informed whatever I did on this framework. And so, I remember one of the days I took a course. I realized that when you look at the course, it is only about reading. There is nothing for you to do. So you read that, uh, the last thing you do is to take a quiz. But this workshop really informed, and then the exposure has really brought, uh, brought a change in whatever I think should be done concerning online, uh, courses and so that one affected my design. You don't have to put only words there. In as much as you want to make sure that your activities, your outcomes, and then your uh, what do you call it, your activities, whatever you are doing, should be what it should be in alignment. And so you should put things there that will make sure that whatever you are doing, the outcome is not different from the activities the students are going to do. So that student will not get bored reading a whole lot of things. You have to scroll down from up to down, and then the only thing you are seeing is only words. And then at the end of the day, they ask you to take a quiz. When you do that, it will not, you will not get the student engaged with their course. And so with my unit one, that is, uh, please, can we go to the next unit? That is um, the unit two. Yes, so the topic in health and physical assessment of patients, which is a very, a very important topic. So with this, the aim of it is to introduce students to the various skills and techniques we use in conducting assessment of patients. So with the, this topic, the components under this topic includes health history, physical, uh, examination techniques, which includes the inspection, palpation, percussion, and then auscultation. And then, of course, we would have to do a head to toe examination of a patient. So, with the intended learning outcome, the student are using Bloom's, with the help of Bloom's taxonomy, these were the outcomes that I formulated. Students should be able to describe the component of the health issue. If students are able to describe it, that means they know what to do when a patient comes and they are taking history. And to identify the techniques of physical examination, your ability to identify it will be able to even perform physical examination using the four techniques. And at the end of the day, we want them to apply. And so they should be able to apply these techniques in conducting physical assessment, which will be done in the skills lab. And so let's move on to the alignment, the constructive alignment. So with this one, describing the component of health history, where and how this outcome is going to be assessed is going to be face-to-face -face in the classroom. And it's going to be in the form of discussion. Before students will start, students might have gotten exposure, that is being on the hospital. Maybe a physical assessment was conducted on you, or you observed a patient or you observe the health professional performing physical assessment on a patient. So based on this, we could maybe start with want to find out your experience. So on the face-to-face, -face, students will share their experience of the world and then how they saw patient uh, doctors or health uh, professionals performing physical assessment on patients and then 
To identify the technique of physical assessment, this one is going to be in the form of short quizzes, which will be taking place on the uh, LMS. And applying the techniques to which is going to be the face face in the skills lab, you'll be called and then there'll be a dummy where you're going to perform the physical assessment on the patient. And I think with this interactive learning will take place if you implement things like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kwame. Next on my list is Silas, Silas Eje. After him will be Salahuddin Idrisu. Silas, please come. Oh, we are not clapping crowd. I'm Silas Eje from Pentecost University, and I'm very grateful for selecting me to present my, yeah. So this is my V class. And as we all know, before you start the course, you have to introduce yourself to the students. So I stated my telephone number, email address, and even my uh, office hours. And also, after that, uh, the students have to know their bio data so that I can know wherever they are coming from, their name, age, gender, their skills, and their interests. And I also uh, developed a, a flip discussions because I want to know the students, their idea on uh, the research method, introduction to research methods. Sometimes students will be complaining, research methods are difficult, and those things, so they should uh, record a three minutes video of themselves telling us anything that they know about research method. And the course, the unit was in four sessions, four units. So the first unit was the course outline where the students supposed to download. And this course outline, I have the course objective, which was derived from uh, Broom's taxonomy. It really helped me. I mean, the library, Pentecost University Library, sometimes you'll be there, a lecturer will call you and ask you, please, I want you to help me design my course outline. Sometimes, at first, I didn't know how to do about it, but with the help of this uh, workshop, I'm able to, so sometimes I just type Broom's taxonomy. After that, I'll ask you, what do you want to achieve then? The taxonomy, Broom's taxonomy will just give me the outline. And the next one is, yeah, so this is my first unit. Under the first unit, I have uh, the objectives under the first unit. So under the first unit, first unit, I have slides, slides, and also additional videos which the student can watch to help them. And the second one is the second unit, which is a uh, qualitative research. Under it, I have assignment, I have outline all my course objectives. And the, when you switch to the when you switch to the student side, you will see that I've even restricted assignment, restricted assignment under the first unit. Please move down. Down. Okay. So I have a restricted assignment under this unit. Yes, that's it. So assignment three. It's not, the time is not, the it's uh, 26 July. So when, when it's 26 July, to open for the students to uh, assess the assignment. Thank you very much. For lunch. Salaudi, the moderator should do what? Buy him lunch. Nah. After him will be Michael Tete, so please get ready. Thank you very much. I'm Salaudi Idrisu from NMTC Bola. Okay. 
So this is uh, basically the outline which uh, everyone was having, and as the the beginning, we we needed to put in the key features for it, in the name of the institution, the contact person, and the the rest of it. So let's go to the one. It's okay. Uh, so the course I was. I chose to repurpose was nutrition and dietetics, which was uh, taught to undergraduate that's uh, public nurses at a diploma level. And the online study, the hours for it was designed to be three hours. Against the number of weeks of study, ideally we have 16 weeks, but actually the number of weeks of study was made to be 12. So that's where we had the total student learning hours to be 36. So this repurpose model program might be the program will be good for registered public nurses, registered general nurses, registered midwife free, and registered nurse assistant, and that of the registered nurse assistant clinical. Uh, clinical. Uh, so the prerequisite for students' abilities and knowledge also so sometimes when we are repurposing it, that we have to take that one into consideration what they need to know before they start and you the facilitator what you need to know was also there. But generally the aim of the model was basically to equip learners with the knowledge and skills to recognize nutritional needs of individuals and special groups and be able to propose and implement nutrition interventions at the community level. Basically that is what the whole uh, course is about. So we, according to the NMC curriculum. We have about 13 learning outcomes. But going through this training, we realized that there were too many. We can regroup them and merge some of them. So out of the 13, I was able to merge them into seven main learning outcomes. Uh, all right, so, this, so out of these seven main learning outcomes, each of them, you have to assign a model assessment task. And like most of my colleagues indicated, sometimes we initially we believe that when you are designing, before you even think of a task to give students, you have to end teaching the topic. But we were made to realize that you should even be, as you are starting the topic, you should have the end in mind. So that in designing that, the, the first learning outcome was to explain the concept of nutrition in health and disease. So you have to decide how do you want to assess this particular topic. So that was what was done for all the major ones. As the CIF one, for instance, was talking about to evaluate current issues and trends in nutrition, including the impact of food system, food policies, and environmental factors on population health. So the level task was to identify key methods of food supply in Ghana and how they contribute to health and disease. So each of these is addressing the outcome six as designed. So these are the other ones. So let's go to the, the first uh, unit one. This is unit zero, unit one. Uh, You go down and go down. All right. So this is the, the unit one. The, I'll just look at the, the first unit because it cuts across the rest of the unit, the same pattern. So uh, the topic name should be there. The aim of the topic was communicated to the students and the topics to cover under the main topic was also outlined. And the intended learner outcome for that particular topic was also captured. And the overview of the student's activity was described. And the main topic was the concept of nutrition, health, and disease. So the overview of student activity was that the student will be allowed to share their thoughts about the importance of nutrition on a piece of paper. And new names will be written down as just to encourage student participation. And so at the end, they will engage in discussion together with the facilitator to demonstrate their motivation to learn nutrition. So when students read this aspect, they know what their activities they are coming to do within the, the course, that, that, that particular topic. So, 
that. So basically, that is the. Uh, so we have other resources that will even be added to them. And so that is what cuts across the rest of the, the, the topic. Thank you very much. I have noticed that as they talk, we keep getting reminders about some of the important things we learn. For example, when you are starting teaching, have the end in mind, so it helps you. So please, let's pay attention, okay? Um, we have Michael, Michael Tete. After him is Ignatius. Please clap for him. Cohort what? You see cohort two. We like you, pal. Thank you very much. Speaking, you can. The next person, you see, I mentioned your name. You can come and check to be sure that yours is ready, so we don't waste too much time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good morning once again, and I must say I'm privileged to have this opportunity this uh, morning to interact with you. I'm very confident because my affable principal is solidly behind me. She's in the best of Madam Elizabeth Yafi <laughs> from NNTC. It's me, I'm Michael Tete. So like my colleague said earlier, I wouldn't want to repeat what he said. So we're taking through the framework and I developed my framework based on all that we've learned. And based on that framework, I've been able to develop my um, upload onto the um, virtual space. So with what we were taught and with the pedagogies we were taught that we have to make the class very interactive and so coming to know of the social constructivism, that guided me in developing all that I did. So, and with the help of Prof. Sire, we see who taught us instructor presence. I developed research that the presence of the instructor is always felt. I'm giving instruction. So I would like him to take us to Unit 3C. So I have, um, eight units, in addition to my unit zero, which is introduction, making nine units. And with that, with the help of the Bloom's taxonomy, and with what we were, we were taught, the rubrics, quality matter rubrics, and all that, I, I, I took into consideration all that. So beginning, I had an overview of the unit for that week, internal learning outcomes, what you are expected to know, what students will be doing. So you'll be put into groups, and because of the structural constructivism I'm using, most of my discussions, we have group presentations where students will meet together, have discussions, construct knowledge together, come and share with the class, then it generates a discussion. And also to make sure that everybody participates, I also, I always make sure that I embed discussion forums. And I will give you something to do in order to come and comment in the discussion. So if you haven't done that activity, you can't comment. Please, let's, let's go down for me. So for instance, my topic was on um, special senses. So we have sense of sight, and like my colleague said earlier, I try to bring variety, so I have videos, I also have PowerPoint slides, and I also have text. So if you have, you read a text, you, read a, you watch the video, and it gives you a clearer understanding. And so this is there, this is there, then you come to sense of hearing, I give instructions what to do with the video. I guide you, read this, do this, go here, do that. You come here, then please let's go down. Let's go. After. Please kindly go up, kindly go up. Yes, so for instance, the discussion. 
I have a discussion here that after watching the video on the physiology of hearing, respond to the post below. So if you haven't watched the video, you cannot make a comment. So you'll be compared to go back, watch the video in order to come and give and then with the with the discussion, I have given all the rubrics, what is expected of you when to submit, the marks you get, the due date, and how to go about all that. And at the end, I have also added additional resources. Please go, go. So you have additional resources that you can refer to and get more knowledge on the topic. And this is how I did it for all my units. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> but Michael, you are blessed though. Your, your principal was happily clapping for you. Hey, you are blessed, man. Ignatius. After him will be Priscilla. Priscilla. So please get ready. Thank you very much. I am Ignatio Sinti Abankro from the Spiritan University College. I have my boss here, a Father Dr. Wilfred Yawakapu. So the one, I'm in court one. Yes. And so the course, the, the course that I teach is called Epistemology 2. It's a course in philosophy that deals with how we come to know. And so there are certain prerequisites that students, it's actually a level 400 course and it is run as a seminar. And so what I, ha I happen to do is that uh, there is first a course overview which provides an insight uh, to the learners uh, what the class is going to be about. And then for every kind of unit, I give a reading list. Uh, please go to uh, perception, the role of perception. But then before, I have placed a course materials, uh, which it's a book by Robert Audi uh, of Notre Dame University. So it is that book that we deal with in this course. And so they have that access to that material. And the very first thing that I did was that there is introduction and getting acquainted where the students are supposed to upload by themselves online videos, introduce themselves to the whole class. And so, each of them gets to do that, and there is a deadline for that. Let's go to uh, the rule of perception, which is, yes. So the very first topic that is treated, and uh, before then, they would have read, uh, please uh, scroll a little up. Yes, there is a reading on perception. And so they get to read that, yes. So after they have read that, uh, then they, uh, use that to present a summary of their findings in the reading. Then there is an operation on perception that they are supposed to do. That I allow for uh, the use of forum. Then there is an assignment. Then afterwards, uh, when the group has come to present, I also walk them through uh, what the thing is about. And so I, I also upload a PowerPoint presentation made by myself. That is, I don't have to open that, please, uh, briefly. Uh, just so it gives an insight to what the students will acquaint themselves with. So in terms of us approaching knowledge, the very first thing we realize is that we use our five senses and perception deals with that. Uh, uh, please, are you able to open it? Okay. So uh, uh, there, I have pictures which allow the student to relate to the concept of perception. And perception is not just seeing. It deals with it in its five components, in, uh, in visual, in auditory, in olfactory, in gustatory, and, and, and yes, and tactile. Uh -huh. So it allows them to do this. So after uh, perception, they will go to memory because and the things we perceive, we try to put some of them in mind. And so we look at the place of memory in keeping information. 
then we go to consciousness. So at every point of the unit, we have a reading list, we have something they have to do, we have a PowerPoint uh, presentation, uh, which allows them to, uh, to benefit from the course. So essentially, this is what the course that I teach was uploaded on the B class. Of course, uh, it is hinged on, on my benefit of the experience we had with the training. The very first two weeks was not easy, I suppose not only for myself, but all, uh, all of us. And my, uh, my, uh, my supervisor, uh, Dr. Linda Vani, uh, <laughs> will call me and ask me, hey, where are you, Ignatius? What is happening with your work? I am sure the pressure in course uh, that she puts on me uh, was able to help me to make uh, this delivery. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Now we have our first lady. Wow. Priscilla. What? Go on, go on. Okay. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. After her will be um, Joe Adai. So please get ready. Good afternoon. I'm Priscilla Doris Akukichi, a tutor, nursing and midwifery training college, Teshi. Just like my colleagues, I developed the template. I used the course psychiatric nursing, or what we now know as uh, mental health nursing, to develop the model. After developing the template, I transferred my information onto the V class. And what we are seeing here, please, I want to see the image. What we are seeing here is the image that I used to introduce the course to the students. So I have 12 units in all, but this image is depicting the human brain which is surrounded by the stethoscope. In effect, I'm trying to depict mental health. And we all know mental health is very important and without mental health, there's no health. So with this image, and then the information under it, I introduced the course to the students and I used labels to do this. I developed the other portions of the model using labels and resources and activities. I took into consideration the different learning styles that our students have. So within the whole model, I have varied the activities. So there's development of infographics, there's group discussions, there's group presentation. And when it comes to the grouping, you don't belong to the same group two times. I vary the groups so that you can learn from your colleagues. So whichever group you find yourself, you learn something new. The next group activity, you find yourself in another group. There are videos, I've added links to notes, to resources, to books. And then there are, there's a Zoom presentation that has to be done. There are assignments, there are quizzes in here. Everything has been set up. And then once you go in there, you can easily navigate your way throughout. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Before we go to the next person, I want us to acknowledge the princess, the presence of the principal of PNMTC Apoko and the person of Carol Watting. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, yesterday was your birthday. Happy birthday, belated birthday. So we have, we have Joe Adai. After Joe will be Ajara too. Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, MST. Uh, our academic officer is here. Send my thanks to the principal for allowing me to be part of this program. Well, that's my, this is my work that I've been assisted through the workshop to prepare. This is a relationship marketing strategy Leading marketing strategy and entrepreneurship for all final year students. So, medical students can use it, nursing students can use it, university students, that is, any professional in the health sector could use this model. 
And uh, this is how I have prepared it. There's an interactive video, video over there. That's, I, have, I have introduced myself, myself and the course over there. Then the course expectation is what the students were expected to have videos of themselves and what they expect from the course. So that's where students are going to participate. They'll give videos of themselves, then have a video there link for helping them to as a resource. Then there's another one for another learning learning resource, which is in form of PDF and other books. So they have books there, they have videos there as well. And then there's an online discussion on the forum where they will need to do some activities. After that, we have assignments as well. So the whole work, sorry, I didn't mention my name, Joe Virtue Adai, <laughs> from NMTC Texas Village Hospital. Yes. All right, so this is how, this how it has been developed. It's in four units, and the unit takes about three to four weeks to deliver. So this is how it is done. This is how I've taken them from the beginning to the end. I think it's interactive enough and it's clear. I've made it a kiss. I've made a kiss, right? I've kept it. I've kept it. Yes, I've made a kiss. That's it. I kept it short and very short. That's it. Right. That's it. Thank you. He's kept it short and simple. He doesn't want tissues. And um, please, can we have Ajara too? After her will be Martina. Oh, clap for her. Thank you for the opportunity. Good morning once again. Yeah, cohort two. Are we here? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you haven't seen this? Oh, I'm sorry. All right, um, whilst waiting for it to be projected, um, I thank God Almighty for giving us the opportunity to be part of this masterclass content creation. Um, for me, I'm someone who is really passionate when it comes to creating content online to give to students. And before this opportunity was given, I teach basic nursing for over 11 years throughout my tutoring as a, as a tutor, and now I've joined KNUST Oboise campus. And any time I teach my students, even before this online COVID came, I give them the mandate to record whatever I'm teaching, so that after I've left the class, this student can still have access to the video um, content and then keep reha rehearsing till the point that they feel they, are, they have really um, practiced and they have it Hands on. And so, um, lucky for me, this experience with Coco Food Nursing Training, that was my first experience as a tutor. Um, I remember when I was teaching the practical under tree. At that time, we didn't have a practical skills room. We had just one single room with one bed, and we had like almost 100 students. So, I would bring that one bed to the four courts, and then students would come around, and then I would be doing my practical skills, and they'll be taking the video coverage to the extent that some students could even climb trees to take the video coverage of whatever we were doing. That showed how enthusiastic and the students were so enthusiastic about what we were te teaching. And then it came out that that year that I took up um, Kokofu, we had 100% pass for our practical skills. And so when I keep on asking throughout my teaching profession, I keep on asking myself, what avenues can be possibly available for tutors? to help our students, and God being so good, master class said, here I come, come, and I will save you. <laughs> so I think this is a very nice opportunity for us to um, have such a session. And um, as I'm speaking to you, I still have some content that I've done with my students online on YouTube. So if I teach that one, I told them, are you willing to be part of the video? I want to upload on YouTube. They would accept, they will consent to it. I demonstrate, I record, I upload. So once it's there and I teach the group, they come, I share the link to them. They go, they watch the video, and then they keep rehearsing. And so I would want us to open, 
Oh, okay. Okay, so there's a, a, a small hitch. She'll come back after Martina. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Martina, please come. <laughs> Just to be sure that you haven't fallen asleep. Where's Martina? Please come. So after Martina, Ajaratu will come again, and then Emmanuel Asidu. I must say the experience of this master class for me has been transformational. Indeed, um, I was using the learning management system, but not extensively. But through this uh, master class, I have been able to equip myself with tools that I can use to engage my students online. And in fact, whilst I was developing the, uh, the learning module, I, I, I wasn't too sure of what I was doing, but and whilst developing, I, I noticed that there is a vast, I mean, online resources for the course that I developed. And the course is a fourth year course called Process Control and Simulation. And it is a course, though it is, it is both theoretical and practical, and um, it affords the students opportunity to apply the knowledge that they have acquired, especially in the second year in both chemical engineering courses and then um, uh, mathematics. And mathematics uh, as well. So, um, in fact, whilst developing the course, what I did was that um, for the first module, for the, that is the, the first unit, the first unit, what I did was that the assignment that I chose was assignments that will enable the student to apply the knowledge that they have acquired in, the, in, in courses in both the second year and then the, the third year, and also a course in the previous, uh, in the first semester of the final year. And all the topics, the subsequent topics that the student, that are new to the students, what I did was that the assignment that I designed were to be done after the course, after the module or the, the unit has been delivered. So that is one thing that I took into consideration. And also because the course is such that it spans the entire level of the Bloom's taxonomy, such that at the end, students should be able to create a simulation of a process and also incorporate a, a controller, simulate it, and then read or evaluate the responses or the outcome of the simulation. Uh, it, it enabled me to, to incorporate all of that and also to um, give them the opportunity, give them the, or the opportunity to familiarize themselves or build the, the knowledge that they have already acquired in the, the software that we're going to use. So, and in fact, this has been an eye-opener for me. And, it, and since I went through this program, I have never been the same. My style of delivery, the materials and resources that I make available to my students are world class. So I'll take this opportunity to thank the organizers and also for, uh, to thank them and also for selecting me. Indeed, it is a privilege for me and it has been transformational for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martina. We made you talk plenty. Forgive us, okay? Please let's call Emmanuel Asiri. Emmanuel Asiri. He's not here? Next one, okay. Abigail Chenson. After Abigail will be Kwekubeidu, and then Francis Kofisa Akodie, Mustafa Titi, Janet, David Nate, Benes, Grace, and then Timothy. In that order. Oh, please welcome Abigail. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
I want to thank the KNSD and e-learning team for selecting me. My principal is here. I'm really grateful. In fact, with this journey, it wasn't easy. But one thing that I learned, uh, I used a flip chat, a flip uh, video. Then I sent it to my students. I didn't know, I always they were complaining of network, network. So I sent them a video of myself, telling them they should do a video, a one minute video and explain what it means by chat neglect. And it's too much. Within 30 minutes, I was having 145 students responding to that. Then they responded and realized that I sent them another one. I realized that they were becoming interactive on the uh, online. I said, oh, so these students can be interactive like this, and I didn't know. So from there, when they said we should, I chose this course, Child Protection and Abuse. Knowing that with this child protection and abuse, it's a new course. But once you start to teach, you realize that the experience that they share. So with my templates, I've developed a Padlet, where on the Padlet, I've given them share your ideas or your experience with child abuse. If you have experienced some before, feel free to share how is it, how did you feel? the treatment that was melted onto you. And you realized that they were sharing their experience and that made the introduction to the course very lovely. And the student loved the child abuse protection and a, a child protection and abuse course. Then from there, with each introduction, I provided them with a YouTube uh, link where they would go in there and they would watch those YouTube. Then after that, I will ask them, sometimes I give them a picture, so it's in my model. A picture and ask them, what did they think about the picture? So I created a discussion forum that without the picture, they will look at it critically. Then tell me what the child is doing and what the man is also doing to the child. Then they will come out up, uh, what they think is going on. Then that will introduce us to another course. Then I also learned about the Google form for the quiz. So on my mother, I've done a quiz, about five uh, quiz for them, where after each session, they will go online, answer the question, then submit the response to me. Then after that, I also created a discussion forum, where because it's a child protection and abuse, most students have suffered uh, through abuse, some abuse when they were growing up, and well, so they should share their ideas. And after their course, how this course has helped them and how they are going to ensure that if they meet anybody, they are going to be a child advocacy. Well, I even shared that one person on the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Sister Harriet, I tried to get her YouTube, shared with them that she's now being a child advocate. And I also encourage the students to use the same. And even that when there was one that we were using online, they said, now, Sister, You've turned to an online lecture. You were not used to that. I said, KNEAC has done me that. And we are to progress. And they said, oh, sister, it's nice. We'll continue to use that. So I said that, wow, that this thing has really helped me. And my students are also ready to also do that. And we promise you that the next time that you come to progress, so you come and meet new things over there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abigail. You are also blessed, though. Your principal is on her feet clapping for you. You are blessed. Kweku Beidu. Can I have Kweku Beidu? After him will be Francis Sarkodie. Please, what's for what? Go on to your feature, Paul. Okay, so as they fix, as they fix the, the things, let's have, what is this? Can anybody tell me what's your favorite new, new, um, interactive tool you learned. Somebody mentioned Padlet. Somebody mentioned, yes. Flip. 
Why? The students like it. They're excited about it. Wow. Fantastic. So how many of us have used it? Kahoot. Yeah. So I, are they ready? Oh, they are ready. OK, we'll come back. Good afternoon. I'm Mohamed Gregobedu, cohort two. Uh, my course was uh, second year research methodology. So after the framework, which we developed and accepted, I started the population. So let's go to the getting started. Yeah. OK, so starting with this, I welcome the students to the class or the course And then the uh, instructor So for the students who know uh, who am I, please click here. And when they click there, they will know more about themselves. Uh, then I did a video, a video to welcome them. Oh, I think we can. <laughs> to congratulate you on your successful completion of the first semester's courses and to welcome you to this semester's course. My name is Dr. Mohamed Kokubeidu, a lecturer in the Department of Industrial Arts. Okay. So with the video, I welcome them to the class on that day. And then when they go to the LMS, how do they start? I have the course labels. I have the course schedules, the course learning outcomes. This is the course description, the outcome, course access, and then the requirement, the computer requirement for the students have all been stated there. Then let's go to se section one. I'll take one course and then how I, yes, section one. Okay, so section one is uh, technologies in research. I gave them the overview of the, uh, the section, the learning outcome, and then the areas that they are supposed to learn. So I have those topics like technologies like search, research, qualitative research, and all those things. Students will go through those things before, and then differences between some of the technologies. All this will be done under the section one. Let's go to two. Section two. Okay, so in section two, that's where you are, you are looking at the fundamental concept of research. There too, they are giving the overview, the learning outcomes, and then the activities that they were going to do. They are going to do. They will watch, they will read, and then they will also do some assignments. Okay, so these are the videos, there are some videos for them to watch. The first one is what is research, and then nature and other. All are, these are all re resources that the students will be going through. Now, go up. Now, when they are, please come down. The up, sorry, the same section. Yes, when they are done watching the video, there are some assignments that they have. There's a discussion forum first. Yes. Okay, so here what they are, the discussion is. Okay, the discussion is define research and briefly elaborate on the etymology of research. So, how we should go about this has been indicated down there. Go on. Okay, so aside, apart from that, the other topics that they are going to look at is the motivation of research, concept of research, definition, all those ones falls under the fundamental concept of research. Now, when they are done with all the topics under section one, there's one assignment which they will do. Please go down there, down, and that, to the last part of the section. Go. Okay. Go, go. Okay, here, quiz, assignment, okay. 
So assignment on the fundamental concept of research. Please click on that one. So here there's quiz that they will do, which will cover the whole section. Even though at, after every topic, they will do some exercise. When they are done with the whole topic, there's quiz that they will do. This is how the, uh, my element has been populated throughout. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have Francis? Please walk forward. After Francis will be Mustafa. Good afternoon. Um, Francis Kofisa Kodi, cohort one. Cohort one, yes. And um, I'm responsible for repurposing SMS 152 Human Anatomy 1. And the course will be useful to learners of Human Biology 1, Dentistry, Medicine, Physician Assistantship, Medical Imaging, Medical Laboratory Technology. And the course seeks to give a general overview of anatomy as an important clinical science, as well as uh, gives insights on classification of parts of the skeleton, microscopic anatomy, uh, analysis of basic tissues of the body, and also issues related to pre-embryonic uh, development. I had 10 units, with unit zero, uh, talking about introduction and getting acquainted. And uh, the remaining nine units spelling around the various course discipline. So unit one has introductory to anatomy. Introdu introduct this one is the net ticket. Uh -huh. Introductory anatomy. With introductory anatomy, it looks at definition of anatomy as an important clinical science and also um, the various disciplines and uh, anatomy, talking about instruments and the uh, procurement of cadaver, that is dead uh, bodies, and uh, also ability to interpret medical imaging or to give interpretation to medical imaging. This can you move? So there are uh, various uh, YouTube videos that were being given to help support um, this is one of them. Then um, there are also books or references that can be made, don't you? Snell, more, uh, Kate Moore, among others. Then into that, uh, the next one, Unit 2, is about the human skeleton. And with the human skeleton, that's the gross anatomy one. We have the axia and we have the appendicular skeleton. It spells out the various objectives of the topic. And um, we also have multiple choice assignments which are being attached. And um, various resource material, PowerPoint slides, are also being added to support the student. And other resource videos are also included. Unit 3 has microscopic anatomy. And that one is basically about the four basic tissue. Talking of connective tissue, uh, muscle uh, epithelium and the nervous tissue. And they also have online quizzes as well as uh, various uh, Google Docs as well as uh, Flip and uh, Padlet being inclusive. So for Unit 3, we have four basic tissues, which has the epithelium being the first one, followed by um, connective tissue, followed by nervous tissue, being part of it. So we have uh, a Google form quiz on epithelium. We have three of them where the link is being shared. Uh, please, you can click on the first one. So the, the link is being shared and students can go there and uh, work on the Google form quiz. So I think there's a sample of them showing the various photo micrographs where various um, answers are being provided. And as we were taught, they are being, uh, they are being shuffled so that the answers uh, will vary, but uh, the, uh, the options will vary, but the answers will still remain the same. 
So it's the same for the other, the other types of basic tissue. That's connective tissue, muscle, and um, the nervous tissue. Please, you can go back to the main page. Okay, so these are still resource videos on uh, the epithelium to guide the student. We have three of them talking about each of the disciplines or each of the types of epithelium. Next will be unit four. Okay. So I think uh, it's the same for Unit 4. Unit 4 talks about the connective tissue, and Unit 5 will also talk about uh, muscle tissue. Then the next one will be the nervous tissue. The last unit is developmental anatomy. Good. So the developmental anatomy is Unit 1. That talks about gametogenesis, formation of gametes, as well as uh, forms of fertilization and um, various issues related to it. So this one, we have discussion forms, and uh, we also have um, Google Docs being added to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francis. Can we have Mustafa? After him is Shamit. Thank you very much. My name is Mustafa Titi Yusuf uh, from the Midwifery Training College, Tumu. And I'm in cohort two. <laughs> so I am repurposing nutrition and dietetics for online delivery. So in my case, what I decided to do is to convert a template into a short PowerPoint presentation, which I want to quickly run over. Slide. Okay, so to begin with, I wanted to look at how the master class um, supported us to be able to come out with our content on the V class. So I said that first of all, the issue of the entire issue of online pedagogy is something that in general people think is not very effective for teaching and learning. But this, from the training we got, is like a misconception. Because sometimes you realize that even using online as a strategy for teaching can even be more effective compared to the in-person or classroom teaching because of the various tools and things you can use. Also, setting clear goals is something that the master class workshop has actually taught us. Because sometimes you set the goals and objectives just for the course, the entire course. But when you get into the individual topics, sometimes you don't take the time to do that. But this workshop has also helped us to do that. There are a lot of things that the class has, the master class workshop has supported us with, including the ability to work on the learning management system. Because a lot of us did not have any prior knowledge on working on learning management systems. But through this master class workshop, most of us are tested, and we are actually capable of putting our content on the learning management system for online delivery. So to move on to the main issue, the course I am repurposing is Nutrition and Dietetics. It's generally a diploma program, and the number of credit hours allocated to it is three hours. 
this course I have remodeled can also be applicable to the following programs. Registered General Nursing, Registered Public Health Nursing, Diploma in Nutrition and Dietetics as well. Share the link. So, um, in terms of the number of units, on the NMC curriculum, we have up to 13 topics. But in repurposing it for online delivery, I have summarized into eight units. So the eight units with a unit zero, which is for introduction and adopting to blended learning environment. So for unit zero, I'll just go straight to looking at some of the learning activities that I put under unit zero. So the first activity was a course welcome and overview video from myself, which was done and embedded on the learning platform so that when the students go, they see it. The students also use the forum function on the V class to introduce themselves so that they get to know each other as they learn. Then, aside that, because the, the unit also has to do with netiquette and then blended learning, I have put on resources that will help the students to also learn that. And then finally, there's a discussion forum to help the students share ideas from what they have learned from what has been put on the V class. Um, this is the alignment. I don't want to waste time on that. When you go to unit one, which basically is about the concept of nutrition and health. Um, on this one, the learning activities that I put on it are, first of all, I put some YouTube videos that will introduce the students to what the whole concept is about. Additionally, I also shared some PDF documents, which those who are not very okay with the videos can as well alternatively go on and read those PDF documents to get what the whole concept is about. And then there will be a discussion of what they have learned and, and all that. So this is a constructive alignment as well. Unit 2 has some other learning activities. Again, there is a use of YouTube videos that I have embedded. The students will also use Padlets, PDF, I've also put on an assignment. This is from the Padlet discussion where the students, after doing the discussion, will have to upload the discussion as a form of assignment. This will encourage the students to do the discussion on the Padlet. So basically, it looks like that for most of them. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show one of the units that involves not the facilitator personally uh, delivering or getting the students, but it involves inviting somebody externally. Where, and in this case, because it's online, you can actually talk to people even from headquarters and the barrier of distance and transportation will not come. So because of that, there is one of the learning activities that who invite an expert from the Ghana Health Service who is into nutrition, either at the regional or national level, to deliver a Zoom, in this case, that would be a synchronous lesson, on nutrition policies, and then the students can follow. Afterwards, the recording will be shared on the V class to enable them to follow. So you are shining this afternoon. All. Okay, can we have Janet, please? After Janet, with David, David Nati. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm a proud member of cohort one. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, KUSD, and I thank my principal very much for choosing me to come for this program. It has been very helpful, and my favorite is FLIP, my group members will see. I interacted with my students on FLIP, and they like, initially, they didn't accept it, but I attached marks to it, and then they liked it. <laughs> so, at the end of the semester, I asked for expectations for the course for the semester. And then getting to the end of the semester, that was when some people were now uploading videos. And they liked it. They want me to bring in more of the flip uh, activities for them. And then on Quizlet, they are able to play games with the questions on Quizlet. They liked it. So this is 
This is my model template for the course. Please. Okay, so the name of my model or title of my model is uh, Human Anatomy, uh, Reproductive Anatomy, that's the short form, or Anatomy and Physiology of the Human Reproductive System and the Fetus. And I am Janet Mapika Ayanga from Midwifery Training College for Gatanga. So my model has six units or the topics. So the topics, I call them units. And then including the introduction and getting acquainted makes them nine. And then I have the aim of the model or the course. And then the brief description. The programs that might include this model will include BSc midwifery, BSc nursing, public health nursing, and then any other course that will involve the human reproductive system. Please, can we move forward? Okay, and then some of the prerequisites. No, go up, please. Okay, so the prerequisite students' abilities and knowledge will include knowledge in basic ICT and then introduction to human anatomy, uh, the human reproductive system. And then also the pre prerequisite or co-requisite models. We include human anatomy and physiology one. That's the general anatomy and physiology one. And then anatomy and physiology two. Please, can we go to the model? Okay. So the model is the course. And then I have the intended learning outcomes for the whole model, the whole reproductive anatomy model. These are the outcomes for the model. And then each of the units too will have its own intended learning outcomes. Please, let's move on. And then the indicative content, please. Indicative content are the topics or the units. So I have introduction and getting acquainted and then the various topics that come under the course. Let's move. Okay, so I take each of the model level learning outcomes and then the model assessment task, the various tasks that will be assigned to each of, uh, that, will, that will, will be taking place in order to meet these level outcomes. Please, let's move. Okay, so the student groups is the first year diploma students. And then, please, can we move to the units, the various units? Okay, so I have unit zero, that's introduction and then getting acquainted. We intro getting to know, the students getting to know me and me getting to know them. It's a blended session. So some of the activities will be face to face in the classroom and then the rest will be online which will use the uh, forum discussions on the virtual classroom. And then I have unit one, that's the first topic. That is the structures that form the female external and internal genitalia. Each of the units or topic have their aims. So this is the aim of, of unit one. The, the topic seeks to equip you, the student, with the knowledge. I can't read all because of the time. Then. The topic covers the content of the topic or the unit. So this topic will cover the female external genitalia, female internal genitalia, and then the rest will follow suit. So we have the intended learning outcomes for the unit, for the unit or the topic. It's also there. Please, can we move again? Okay. So we have uh, class discussions. Some will be face to face, some will be online. And then we also have activities which will include using the Quizlets. There are videos that are uploaded for pre-learning sessions and then post. We have PDFs and PowerPoints and then other activities. And it has been a great session and I've learned a lot. Thank you. I thank my principal too. Thank you, Janet. Can we have David, please? I am a proud member of uh, Court One. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so uh, my course is a final year course, and uh, I've transposed the developed model into the V class. So the uh, unit one basically looks at the introduction of the course where over here what I did was uh, I introduced them to the aim of the entire course and also give them um, the instructions for the semester where uh, class assessment, everything was well spelled out. In this particular course, what I also did differently was that um, I developed a tenanting link where assignments be submitted through tenanting. I also developed a flip link where discussions will be based. And another discussion where we use Padlet. So what I usually do is that if this week we use Philip for our discussion, the following week we are going to use Tenetine for our assignments. And because of the emergence of AI, my students, I instructed them that they should be careful with the, the uh, transfer, uh, transferring of uh, information into the assignment page because I'll check everything using the Tenetine. And if it appears that uh, you you like bring everything direct from AI into it, I'll find out and you are going to get zero. That was the, that was the whole thing. So um, this, 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 this is the model. So each unit has its own aims and has its learn, learning outcomes. And uh, dates for assignments have also been well spelled out. And uh, I think so far, that's how the whole thing went through. And I also added my uh, re reference materials. Videos are attached to every unit where uh, after, after going through the, the, the PowerPoint presentation, we have vi vi videos to also support their learning. So I think uh, I, at the beginning, I also introduced myself where each and every student is able to understand the whole program. My email, my phone numbers, all contacts have also been presented where if they have any difficulties, they can get to me directly. So, so far, that's how my v class has been developed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. Benes, Benes Adai. Let's be in the room. After Venice, we have just two more people, then we are done. Good afternoon, everybody. Please, I'm Venice Adai from NMT Sikoforidia. My principal is here, Ajia 1. I'm with cohort 1 2. Please, um, I worked on supply chain management. That is what I use for my model. And with supply chain, most of the times, the students who partake in the course, when they hear the name supply chain, sometimes it's not too comfortable for them. But um, with the instructor's presence, which I learned from the workshop, which is very important, helps them to be able to enjoy the course. And from the model, please go down a bit for me. You realize that where we talked about the, please go. No. Uh-huh. Okay. When you move down the template. Uh-huh, go a bit. Okay, I think you've bypassed it. With the uh, prerequisites for the facilitator, I added um, experience with supply chain activities or procurement activities. I think it really helps the facilitator to be able to involve the students very well when it comes to the practicality or technicality of the course. So that is one aspect of it. And then again, when it comes to the units, we have seven in all. It starts from the concepts, you look at the logistics management information system. When you receive your items after going through the logistics cycle, you are supposed to keep the things at the stores. So you receive them, you are supposed to also store them 
according to the appropriate storage guidelines. When you get the things you are supposed to assess your stock, and then the storekeeper who is in charge of the place should be able to also know the maximum and then the minimum of the things that you receive so that you don't overstock the place or run out of stock. And then finally, monitoring and supervision is also an aspect of it. So when you look at the units, I started from the introduction. I mean, the students getting to know you, you also getting to know them. And then we move on to the various units. So it's seven, but because of the practical aspect of it, when it comes to looking at the records, that is the forms that are used, the transactional records, the stock keeping records and the rest, I broke it down. So I have 10 units in all, because you need to take them through the filling of the bin cards, the worksheets, and then the RIFs form. And you need to dedicate a unit to each of them. So if you are just to look at the course outline, you realize that it's just seven. But because of those practicalities, you need to break them down to have the 10 units. And then again, with the workshop that we had, it's, I mean, enlightened us more on the other tools that can be used, like the flame, the padlet, and the rest. And because of the technicalities, when you are tuning it down to the students, Sometimes when you give them the flip, for them to tell you how they manage their stock at home, it becomes more interesting. At first, I mean, it's just about the class, but because we are repurposing it for online delivery, and then because of the workshop that I had the opportunity to be part, it has helped us to bring in those tools to make it more interesting at every point in time. So when you go through the model, I mean, we've used the Padlet, the Flip, the Google, dot and the rest. And then we have quizzes also into it. And then we have the discussion outlets to using the LMS. So I think on the whole, the workshop had enlightened me more, especially on the importance of the instructor's presence. And then using more tools to make the delivery more efficient as compared to just coming in the classroom and then you talk and then everybody disperses. So I would like to thank my principal for giving me the opportunity to be part of the workshop and then KNUST and then e-learning center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bernice. Can we have Grace? After Grace, we have Timothy and we'll come to the end of the session. Thank you. I'm a proud member of cohort one. And uh, I think uh, e-learning has made teaching and learning very flexible and convenient. And we are grateful to MasterCard and uh, Professor Asante and his team. And we are grateful to our principals too. I am Grace Baligi. Drepa Nursing Training College, or St. Joseph Nursing Training College, Drepa. And I'm responsible for repurposing a module titled Therapeutic Communication. Ah. Oh. Okay, basically these are details of the institution. And I, I have a co-author who is a senior brother and uh, he's Francis. Concam and Xavier. Right. No. Down. Down. <laughs> okay. So you go up, please. Uh huh. Sorry. Yes. These are programs which might include the model. So you have the registered general medicine, registered midwifery. Registered Nurse Assistant Preventive and a Registered Nurse Assistant Clinical. The prerequisite abilities of the students includes introduction to ICT and the basic communication skills. And the prerequisite or core uh, requisite it's uh, basic communication skills. The aim of this model is to equip students with the necessary knowledge 
tools and skills to effectively utilize communication techniques in a healthcare setting to provide client-centered care and improve patient outcome. This is by way of description of the motto. Actually, I have nine units, uh, but uh, with the training, we decided to make it eight, uh, with unit zero inclusive. So, and then this is by way of the summative assessment, which includes MCQ, essay, and practical exam. So this is my model, model level learning outcome, and these are the model assessment tasks. So it's done for all the eight, the eight units. Sorry. So let's go to unit six. Six. Yes, please. Okay. Right. So the unit six, the topic is uh, cultural and religious factors of communication, and the aims are. The aim is that the aim of this model is to help the students with knowledge to promote cultural understanding and enhance intercultural communication competence, reduce misunderstanding and conflict, foster inclusive environment, and develop global citizenship. And it covers, these are the topic covers under the unit. They are just three. And these are the learning, <coughs> the intended learning outcome. Please. Uh -huh. So here we have class discussion, both in person, in class, and online, using forum on the LMS. Then uh, in with the second, sorry, with the second one, <coughs> second one, we have again in person and in class. Oh, sorry, in person. Then the third one we have in person class discussion and online forum. Using both forums, so it's throughout. Please go up a little. Go up. Yes. This. Yes. So here, the students, the students were asked to watch a movie or a video. Then after that, they will discuss on what actually they think about the video among themselves after the class. So. The purpose of this unit is to help the students to gather comprehensive and reliable information about how cultural influences help give and how to apply strategies when working with patients to interact with their colleagues and facilitators. So the tutor, the, the responsibility of the tutor is to initiate the discussion with the video to help explain how cultural influences our health care and how to apply strategies when we deal with patients in a cross cultural settings. So the students will equally get the opportunity to share their perspective from their experience after watching the video. <laughs> uh -huh, so, uh, the slides and presentations and the, the link is shared with them. <laughs> Share the link, yes. It's shared with them and uh, aside the other apps that we all use. Uh, basically, this was what I was able to do with my students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. And the last for this session, Timothy. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a proud of cohort one. And when I was asked to be part of this presentation, I was like, 
the twentieth person. Everybody is coming to present the same thing. What can I do? So I decided to come up with a PowerPoint to give an overview of what I have. It's just some few slides. Uh, so yeah. So this is yeah. So um, introduction, uh, acknowledgement. That is acknowledging uh, Masterclass Foundation and Kane Westy. Uh, for what they have done by giving us this opportunity. And then the journey so far, the impact and the benefit now and the future, and then the conclusion. So uh, we all know that mental health has been abandoned for some time. And if we have an opportunity to uh, repurpose uh, a course like this and then port it onto LMS, then it means that uh, mental health is going to be accessible to many people. And then, rate of stigmatization is going to reduce. So I said, uh, in today's fast-paced world, where stress and challenges abound, the importance of comprehensive psychiatric nursing course cannot be overstated. So by creating a model that can be accessed through the KMSC V-Class Learning Management System, we have the potential to bring this crucial knowledge to learners worldwide. So before I delve into the details, I'd like to take this moment to express my gratitude to both Kane Westy and Masterclass Foundation for recognizing the significance of incorporating technology into education. This initiative not only enhances the learning experience for our students, but also aligns with the vision of creating a more successful and inclusive educational environment. In fact, uh, most of the things that we were taught, I decided to implement them in my class. And uh, I think my students saw me in a different way. And any time they are coming for, I mean, for lectures, you could see there is some, I mean, energy. Yes. Yeah. So um, our vision is for this project has been, uh, our vision for this project has been multifaceted. First, we aim to create a course not only educate but also foster empathy and understanding by destigmatizing mental health issues we hope to empower future psychiatric nurses to provide compassionate care to patients secondly we recognize the need for flexible and accessible education through the big class lms we can reach learners from diverse backgrounds geographical locations and varying schedules this platform transcends barriers and open doors for aspiring psychiatric nurses who may not have had access to such specialized course. So the journey is so far. So of course, thanking Masterclass. And then the development of this model has been an enlightening journey. We have meticulously created content that covers a wide spectrum of topics from the fundamentals of psychiatric nursing to cutting edge common and uncommon mental health disorders and the multifaceted treatment options available. And then to ensure an engaging and interactive learning experience, we have also incorporated multimedia elements such as case studies, quizzes, and practical simulation that challenge learners to apply their knowledge in real world. So uh, I have an excerpt of my program. You can see that we were using a forum as a feature to engage the students so that they will not be passive learners, but active learners. We also use face-to-face. -face. We also use the flip, which is uh, the most favorite. We use Google Form for uh, quizzes. We also use Padlet uh, to help them to brainstorm and the Mentimeter. I also realized that students really like using the Mentimeter for brainstorming. For instance, if I'm about to start a topic, let's say theories in psychiatric nursing, I'll ask them to give me their impression about it, and then they'll be sharing. And at the end of the day, you will see a whole lot of ideas that they have before we start a class. So this is just some example of it. Then we also have classroom and online group case presentations. And through Masterclass, we have been able to understand how to use software to make students active learners and not passive learners. And so for my course, I had six models, but the six models were expanded into 14 because the topics were many. So uh, for the first model, Introduction to Psychiatric Nurse, we have four topics. And then the second concept of mental health, we have three topics. And you could see the activities that 
you know, were incorporated to make sure that the students were active. Yeah, mental health assessment, common mental health, legal and ethical issues, pharmacology, and uh, psychopharmacology. So I just want to say that uh, being able to put this course onto the elements will make learning accessible. It will also reach far. Many people can easily log on to the LMS and have and it will also break stigma. Uh, and then it will it, it will lead to continuous improvement because people will make people will actually assess the course and make recommendations for improvement, then it's going to enhance future education. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's been a wonderful. So this is me and in the class. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Timothy. I think we deserve to clap for ourselves. We've done fantastic work. And as Prof said earlier, it's just the beginning. I believe that as we use them and we use them, we'll just get better and better. At this point, I would want to invite Prof Eric. He's going to help us do some presentations. Right, so uh, humbly we have gotten to the awards of the certificates and we will be if we can have the light on for the photo shoots and for and for the presentation to be done so everyone who participated in this training is certified and it's a certificate of uh, participation and also uh, to add to your dossier as a testament to you but, uh, having the competency in course content creation and online model development. And so these certificates are going to be presented to you. I can have the list please so that we can use that to Hold on. We will humbly crave the indulgence of our principals to help us with the presentations uh, as and when you are called upon to do so. So the first is uh, he's coming from Okay, West Yobuasi, and his name is Cynthia Yabakuma. Cynthia, to do the presentation, uh, the project lead would humbly do the presentation for us. That's Mr. Julius Noga. Let's clap, please. Uh -huh. Maybe a good the background would be uh, this background will help us. Yeah. Cameraman. Following uh, Samuel Boahe. Samuel Boahe. KWST. Samuel Boahe. Then from Pentecost University, Eric Mauko. Yes, Eric. Then Silas J. Silas J. Also from Pentecost University, Park of Italia, Edujenfi. Also from Pentecost University, Charles Barr, Charles Barr, Charles Barr. So after this, we'll humbly call on the principal and the representative from 37 to do the presentation for us. Charles, oh. Uh, Diana Bosumchi, Diana Bosumchi from 37 Military Hospital. Joe Vettio from 37, Joe Vettio from 37.
David Obema from um, KNWS Yobwazi. <laughs> yeah, please continue. Ijoma Chinedum Koko. All right. Koko. KNOS TV. Oh, keep clapping, please. Let's keep clapping. Principal, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Principal from uh, TBA, NMTC, TBA. Uh, let's welcome Madam to help us with the presentation. Michael Nati Tete. Tete. Tete Nati. Michael. Benedicta Asamoa, all from a TBA and MTC. Thank you very much. We have principal, Holy Family, Nkoko. All right. So, Madam will continue with the presentation. You do that for Esther Ifa, who is from NMTC, Holy Family, Nkoko. Oh, Esther, let's clap for Esther. Very hard working. <laughs> Madam, you continue with Francis Kofi Sarkodie, KNOST. Francis Kofi Sarkodie. And then we have, if we have the principal for NMTC Cape Coast. <laughs> Madam Jemima would continue. Thank you very much, Madam. So, Principal, you're presenting for Victoria Amankwa. Amankwata. Please continue with um, Professor Anthony Andrews. Professor Anthony Andrews. Professor Anthony Andrews is a deputy director for Institute of Distance Learning, KNOST. He was so committed to the training. We are proud of you, director. Uh, and then you continue to do the next one for Martina Francesca Bedu. Martina, also from KNRST. Then we go to Tumu College, principal here. All right, project lead will continue presentation for us. Um, from Middle Free Training College to Mo Mustafa Titi Yusuf. Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so Doris Hagan should please follow. Doris Hagan is KNOST Obwasi. Doris KNOST Obwasi. So after that, we humbly invite Principal Tira Haruna, NMTC Bonnie, to continue for us. Salahuddin Idrisu. Oh, let's clap. Salahuddin. And then Frank Ajay. Frank is also from Bonnie. Frank Ajay. NMTC um, Second D. Alaji, Honorable, please we'll continue with the presentation for us. Isaac Ado Oguri. Instructor proceeds. <laughs> okay. So you do this one. Then from
All right, so I'd like you to do um, Isaac Addo Ubri for us, Isaac Addo Ubri, NMTC Second D. And then Eunice Johnson, also from NMTC Second D. I'd like you to continue with that of um, NMTC San Gregoire, Emmanuel Oche, I see you do. Emmanuel Oche, I see you do. Madam Cecilia Underwood, a principal for ICMA, please to continue with the presentation. Is Ocho here? Ocho is not here. Can someone pick it for him? Yes, the colleague is picking for him. Okay. ICMA Lucas Asamoa. Lucas Asamoa. Madam, you continue with Bless Mom, the Free Fire Braco. Bless Mom, the Free Fire Braco. <laughs> Principal for Dua and Quanta, uh, Madam Joyce Ohini. We'll continue with the presentation. Uh, Bless Mom, is Bless Mom here, please? Someone pick for him. Bless Mom is Obuas, uh, KNUST. Obuasi. Yes. Good. Congratulations, thank you. Madam Joyce will continue with Kwame Agube from PMT, uh, PMTC, Yaron Panta. Madam, please continue with uh, John Bakan, Prof Bakan. <laughs> and Ejaratu Lampini. All of KNOST. <laughs> Principal for Chupu Prasso, please continue after Gerard. So, Madam Stella Opong, please. Principal. Abigail. Chenson, Abigail Chenson. Oh, let's clap for Abigail. All right. Madam, I'm to the next one. Um, Elliot Scranton Tano. Dr. Tano. All right. From KRST. All right, Cape Coast, NMTC Cape Coast, Principal, Ocean Standard, sure. SDA, Nelson, SDA, Principal. Okay, so, the PA will do for it. Edward Obey Amoa, SDA, Nelson, and Middle Free. Let's clap for Edward. Linda Yaboa. SDA, Linda, Yaboa. <laughs> Representing the uh, principal for Garden City, um, please, Mavis, Madam Mavis. Sharon. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I'll be crying. Yeah, I'll be crying. Madam, yeah, I'll be crying. We'll pick the certificate. Then we move to Holy Family NMTC, Brekum. So, representing the, the principal is uh, Madam Rita Ajay Wachi. Humbly come do this for us. Joseph Apia. Joseph appeared. And Elisha. Uh, what's the name? Elisha. No, no. Elisha, no, no. Sorry. It's Elisha here. Oh, you picked it, all right. 
Thank you very much. Navrongo, principal. Madam Alice, please. Niadawi Nixon. Okay. Madam, please continue with. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Stella. Afi Makafui Yebleno. Stella is not here. Can any university please pick for Stella? Stella. Stella is. Uh, university main. Yes, good. After that, the principal of the rep from Bogatanga should please come help. Oh, okay. Madam Christiana. Janet Ayamga. Janet. Principal for Jirapa. Jirapa. There are two Jirapas? Okay. Both of them should come. <laughs> St. Joseph NMTC, Jirapa. Uh -huh. Yes, um, please help in presenting for Grace, um, Grace Baligi. Grace Baligi. <laughs> then we have uh, Pius Kampong. The next one, uh -huh, right. The Nelson Trading College, Wa. Why is not here? So, sir, you please continue with Wa. Sophia, Bio, Duma. Sophia. Oh, let's clap for Sophia. Did very well. Laura, principal is here. Please humbly uh, come do the next one for us. Alexis Borrow. Alexis. Bro. So, principal, please continue with another one. Juliet Opon Asari and Sir. K University, Juliet Opon Asari and Sir. Please, if you can do these presentations as well. Prisla Doris Aku Kitsi. Prisla. And then please add Mohammed Kwaku Bedu. Mohammed Kwaku Bedu, K University. Participants for Keta, are you here please? Participants for Keta. Okay. All right. Okay, so we go to, uh, thank you very much, madam. Ensign Global. Principal of the re registrar is here. Please present for us, Stephen Manote. Stephen Manote. Uh, yeah, I think one of the names got to the next page. Right. So, please, please, you, you come again. You do it for Janet Aye. Janet Aye. Janet. Hey, Janet, how come your name? <laughs> most, most good. So, the PI will do for um, the following. Thank you very much. Laurentia Pukuasian, KNOST, Laurentia Pukuasian. Nancy Anataba Jikonu. Nancy. Docas Utu Echampon. Docas Utu Echampon. 
Vincent de Paul. Vincent de Paul. Is Vincent here? Okay. It's okay, let's see someone pick for Vincent for us. Uh, let's know. Yes, Prof, thank you very much. Then, after this spirit time university. Yes, Reverend. So, Reverend, please, you present for spirit time. Ignatius in T. Abankro. And then you add Oseya Akoto, KNUST, Oseya Akoto. Please, now here, someone pick for him, please. Oseya Akoto. Any KNUST, pick Oseya Akoto, please. All right, so we can show it and attend to it. Thank you, Principal. Thank you. We move to Presbyterian NMTC Akubu. Principal. Uh -huh. Yes, Madam Boateng, Harold. Thank you very much. Bernard Kwesibedu. Bernard Kwesibedu. And then Teresa Ashley Mensa. Oh, let's clap for them. Abubu. <laughs> Teresa will follow. Teresa Ashley Mensa. Is Teresa here? Oh, pick for Teresa as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> Principal Mary for Kofodia, Kofodia and MTC. All right, good. Yes. Madam, please, you presenting to, I think, the last, yeah, Benis Adai. Benis Adai. And Elliot Asakadite. Elliot Asakadite. <laughs> yeah, <so fun>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Elliot, please. Then the last one uh, from Tepa NMTC. The principal, please, humbly. Thomas Aquinas Asafuaje. Thomas Aquinas Asafuaje. Some names, yes, sorry, I skipped some. Richard Adai, Richard Adadi, Richard Adadi. Joyce Wahima, Joyce Wahima. Okay, no, I nearly said that if you didn't hear it, it means you are drilling a course. <laughs> William Oba for Samoa. <laughs> Really, I'm over for someone. <laughs> Asaya Okoto, please speak for Asaya Okoto. Asaya Okoto. <laughs> Kenneth Dodo. Kenneth Dodo. Kenneth is not here. Monica Mensa. Monica Mensa. All right, Monica is also here. Uh, Ignatius in T, a bank row. Ignatius, Ignatius. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. And then uh, Timothy Pritchard. Hey, you almost forgot you. Timothy. Monica Mensa. Monica Mensa. All right, okay, all right. Thank you very much. I believe that everybody has been attended to. <laughs> Chairman, I want to humbly present uh, the names of those who are winning the, the awards from your good self, the office. So we announced during the opening section of the training that um, from the office of the chair, for this project, the best three um, 
participants will be given a special award. This one is a chairman's special award to you. And um, it, you can see the principals, you can see from their presentation that it was really a very difficult task, selecting best three, because almost all the participants really did well. But we had a criteria. So the criteria was used to select the award. I was going to project the criteria, able, but let me read, then that is fine for us. You can also shoot a screen. So we have the criteria for selecting the best three. Let me read out the criteria and then we will show you the elements. The first point there is, was the main decider because everybody really did very well. But we were interested also in timely course content creation. Timely. Time. T I M E. <laughs> <laughs> Timely. So you could see that some of the presentations are awesome, but they just didn't come in on time. <laughs> so, so timely course content. No, this is this is the last screen you saw, so this is not the award winner. <laughs> Be at peace. Uh -huh. Timely course content creation. The selected participant who is taking this award, and of course the rest participated, uh, demonstrated a proven track record time of creating the course content within the specific time frame set by the project team. So punctuality, adherence to these deadlines were crucial for the smooth execution of this project for which reason we are here. That is the first criteria. Second is that you can begin to rule yourself in or out. <laughs> Second, the second is the second is adherence to e-learning standards. The whole thing is about e-learning initiative. So the course content upload should be structured, very well structured, and formatted in accordance with the e-learning course content creation framework given to you, the participants. And this includes a very clear and consistent navigation, interactive elements, multimedia integration multimedia integration, compliance with accessibility guidelines, easy to assess, you know. Uh, for the sake of inclusivity and learning experience. And the selected participants that we're going to announce met the standards. Yes, they met. The last but one criterion was engaging and interactive course content or engaging and interactive content creation. Right, so the awardees should showcase the ability to develop engaging and interactive learning materials that cater for the various learning styles. You know the various learning styles that were taught. Utilizing multimedia elements, quizzes, quizzes for, for the sake of assessment, practical exercise to enhance learner participation and knowledge retention. And all the selected participants who are picking the awards met these standards. Then the last one is proficiency in the use of the learning management system. That really gives you the clearance for this award. So if your, your, your own is not on the LMS, you can, you can sit and drink some water. <laughs> so the, the, the participant who is going to take the chairman's special award is must have um, was proficient in the use of the KNOS LMS, practically the model, mm -hmm. the model to effectively upload, manage, and organize the course materials online. And the three people who have been selected uh, were very familiar with the system and they, they got it. So it was an added advantage. Chairman, with your permission, uh, I want to mention the names and your good self will do the presentation for us. Let's welcome our dear chair. <laughs> I think that, yeah, okay, so, um, le, Chair, please, for the sake of clearance of all doubt, we want to mention the course codes um, so that they would show the screen 
of the on the LMS of these people who are taking the award. Uh -huh. And then that will clear everybody. Is that fine? Military officer, is it okay? All right. You know them already. <laughs> okay. So that calls code that is taking the third position or the third out. Well, it's the same specs though. Let's read the specs. Yeah, please. You, you join chair in the presentation. But let me humbly read the specs of the award and the content. Uh, before I mention the course code. All right, so the, the laptop they are picking is that which will support their work online. Very, very good spec. It's an HP Pavilion X360. Intel, and it's Core i5. 1535G7. It has up to 4.2 gigahertz with Intel. The system has a turbo boost technology, which will certainly help you with um, a cache system, 8.8 uh, um, MB L3 cache system. So it's able to keep wasted files and clear them when you have to command it to do so. And the four cores, so many other specs there. You wish to have this. I tell you. Tell you. <laughs> All right, so now the third, who is picking it? Per the ranking that we did. In our primary school, they will say, we'll be here. <laughs> that person is coming from the affiliate college. So we are drawing closer. And um, certainly from a TCM, um, from a nursing college. The course code is TCM111, TCM111. If you are the one, you know yourself by now. It's coming from St. Joseph. And her name is Grace Balligi. Grace Balligi. Okay. Why is the cameraman? All right, good, 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 good. good. This is beautiful. So beautiful. It's your principal here. The principal, please join in the presentation. We have to take a shot again. Ah. When you receive that, you can give it to your principal. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. Congratulations, Grace. The sec second one with a course code. ENVS 457. It's coming from Obuasi. And his name is David Nati of the man. All right. Good. The, the one who is stopping the list. Um, Chairman, he's also from the KNOSC main campus. This is from Obuasi. It looks as if by natural design, one from the affiliate college, one from Obuasi, one from... We didn't even know until now. <laughs> so um, that person has a course code, actually telephone number 024477. <laughs> the course code N M M J T M J T two seven zero. And his name is Mohammed Kakubedi. Mohammed Kakubedi. <laughs> Mohammed Kakubedi. Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome. Awesome. Chairman, humbly, can we have all those who have received our camera from so that you, you take photograph with the chair and the PI? This is a special award, and we want this record to be on our archives as well. So all of you who have taken their work. Oh, let's clap, let's be proud of our colleagues. Also, also. We humbly plead on all the principals to please join us. And those who are representing the affiliate institutions. Please let's join us in this photo shoot. Are there principals and the heads? Please join us. Principals and the heads, please.
joining this photo is very crucial for us. Beautiful. Cameraman, order, order, please. I have not checked if the awards were coming from cohort one or two. Two. Two of the twos. Two from cohort two. Two from cohort one. Cohort one is really small. <laughs> I see. Too fast. Eh? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Chair. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that. Our dear chair for the occasion, of course, chairman for this whole project, and the principal investigator and the team have really done very well. Uh -huh. Do you want to clap for them for this awesome organization? And we'll take our chair's closer remark in the next steps. Thank you very much. I almost said, Praise the Lord. First and foremost, we want everyone to share. This is the beginning of the other phase in the journey. And we are, on behalf of myself and the team, want to express our gratitude to all of you, especially for our participants and our principals for being here today. Your presence here has made this program it is. What we have exhibited here shows the commitment of KN West to all the partnerships that we have. In actual fact, we could have also run this project with other people, but uh, I'm a fan What's Yes. So we, for us, we know our family members. And when things are okay, we will call on our family members. When they are difficult, we work behind the scene to see how we can make it better. So what we have done today and what we will continue to do is to express gratitude to everyone who is a partner. And we also want you to see that we are committed to the relationship in which we have between us and yourself. Pentecost University is here. Uh, they are a chartered institution. But yes, they are hot. They are here. Because when you go into a partnership, your desire is that the partner would grow the partner will become better. But after the partner has become better, doesn't mean that the relationship does what ends. Yeah, you continue to build upon it. So there are institutions here, Spiritan is here, uh, and Sign is here, because for us, we consider it as a big family, and whatever is good, we share. And we also believe that when it is good for you, you also share with us. My mother-in-law is from Tishi. Yes. So I'm always passing near the school. I was born at Tessa Seven Military Hospital. <laughs> and I know the word that I was admitted when I was a child, every time. The children's ward was just in front of the hockey pitch, where the nursing training is. That is where I was admitted several times. 
And so we, we, have, we have links here. Four Hoy is where I live. So the principal of Four Hoy should be able to know my family. Uh, when you go and you ask of Ellis, Acts of Ellis, it is a name that is, that is deep in Hohoi. So when you ask of it, you will get to know that we are there. But I want to take this opportunity to address one or two issues, and I'll talk about the next step. My sister from Kipopraso raised some issues about whether we have engaged national and nurses and midwifery council. Nurses and Midwifery Council is a regulatory body. Uh, I'll take you back a bit. When we started taking on international students in our nursing program, we are a science and technology institution. And therefore, our nursing program is strongly science-based. So when you are coming in, we look at your science subjects. So our international students come in with physics, chemistry, biology. When it's time for them to go and write a licensure, they say they want general science. They don't like uh, physics, chemistry, biology. And I mean, it was like a mockery to me. And do you understand me? The physics, chemistry, Biology is stronger than general science. And so how does a regulatory body say that? Sometimes don't let us make a mockery of ourselves. Sorry to make that statement. But sometimes we do things and we, we, we are more like a laughing stock. We had to battle this thing for a long time before they changed it. The other side of it is that if people are bringing us foreign money and they have this strong science base and you say that, I mean, the point is they should take their money away. Sometimes you don't understand. The truth of the matter, I speak passionately about things because I believe in certain things. Either you are with it or you are out of it. Every regulatory body has representatives. So nurses and midwifery cancer, there are principles on it. I remember when we were bringing all the health institutions under the umbrella of KNUST in terms of partnership and affiliation. I had to go to the uh, National Accreditation Board. I was put there, and they challenged me. And I took them on. When we were talking, the, some principals were there. So in the same way, the Nurses and Midwifery Council, I don't know the composition, but I believe that there are what? Principals there. So I don't have to go and tell them that e-learning, whether you like it or not, you can, you can go and hide yourself in the sea. Me, I come from Sopo, if you can do. Put the home. If you are forty cashier, me and then you learn it. Apa. If you want to stay in the bush, some in the serious forest, you learn it. It has come. If you want your office to be at uh, what do you call it, uh, Catholic Secretariat area, I pass there almost every day. If you don't want, you can even cover your head with basket or anything. You learn it. It has come. It has come to stay. When COVID was coming and it came, they didn't check whether you are ready or not. Those who were not ready, they stopped and they packed. Those who were ready, they moved on. And the others started chasing those who are ready. So we will not go and tell NMC about Elen. Because it's a shame. It shouldn't even be an issue that you should raise. The other thing I want to talk about is that we are growing as a country, and in academia, we are moving forward. To be frank, regulatory bodies don't, don't develop programs. Have you ever heard of 
uh, national accreditation board coming to tell KNUST that uh, do this or that. No, every program we have started, we started on our own, looking at the needs of the country. When we brought by, uh, uh, by what do you call it, biomedical engineering, today, in your, in your theaters and things, your equipment that are there, there are engineers there who stand by it. Did somebody come and tell us? No. We realize that there is need to do what? To do that. Because for the first time, somebody told me something which was interesting. That even the equipment you use in measuring pressure, they are different. So there are people who have been put on pressure drugs, they, don't, they actually don't have pressure. Please, you get the point I'm making. So, realistically, the people in uh, health training institutions, the medical schools and things, are supposed to develop, come up with programs that reflect the needs, and the regulatory body is supposed to set guidelines for those programs. We are not a socialist country. Sorry to say that. That you run all pro you run all institutions as if we are a socialist country. All of you do this. All of you do that. All of you do this. And somebody is sitting there, and the person is a is a 19th century person. So, uh, these things, these things, they get on me. Seriously, they get on me. Because what annoys me is that these are people, uh, including all of us sitting here, who travel, go to conferences, go to meetings. When we come, what we do is that after we are dropped from the plane, we just say that where is the biggest bin? Then we fold it and put the thing there. Then we come back. How can we exploit the system? So, madam, tell your N N N NMC that there's a man here who had the opportunity to manage an institution. His principle is that whether they like it or not, he learned it has come. Whether they join or they don't join, we will move on. My next contribution on that issue is that for us, as a university, for people who write proposals and write projects. We will continue to write. We will continue to compete. When they advertise, we will, adver we will, we will do our best. If we win the proposals, and we have to partner people to do it, we will do it. Because we believe that as a university, and a first class university, we have to build capacity of institutions. Yes. And we must build capacity of citizenry. So this is what we are doing. We will build your capacity. If your NMC doesn't understand, they can still sit there. Today, whether they like it or not, I, I want to tell you, I'm talking from within me. Today, whether we like it or not, we have changed health education. KMOS has changed health education. Today, everybody has an academic diploma, and they can go and do a top-up degree, and top, do a master's, and continue. And do. People are doing PhDs now, because it is easy. Did it come easy? No. It didn't come easy. I went to National Accreditation Board. I fought. They called me here. I fought. We explain. The fundamental question I ask is this. What we are going to do, is it bad? Why are simple? Why are simple? Zayari Beye, Oye Anado Mo, Bonde Yipano Tifwa Ose, Oye. Nes Oye, Eba Asam. No, I say, Nasa Chose, Nesa Katira Man, Sana, Etu Wana Mo. Nam so, So, Nesa, My mistake. My mistake. Even I'm here. The man can't throw. It is blame me, but don't destroy the system. When you say that, then the person is stuck. Okay, let's look at the way forward. That's the next thing. <laughs> then we look at the way forward and resolve issues. So please, for me, I beg you, 
Also tell your colleagues who are on the council, who are on the regulatory body that look, there are good things. And let us move on. If you still want to sit on that and be a hindrance, you see, my sister said, she, four days, four nights, she was working, four nights. The husband couldn't talk. <laughs> you see, terrible barriers. We, we are barriers, but there are terrible barriers. You can't open your mouth and say that, come and sleep. Where are you, baby? I'm going to Please, I'm begging you, tell your colleagues who are on regulatory bodies that there is nobody who wants anything bad. You have come here. You yourself, you have seen it. Is it bad? No. So go and tell them. Go and fight. That is how we do it. That is all that we, we do. So your question is, is valid. But at the same time, for me, it doesn't affect me. Because at the end of the day, we could have forgotten about uh, the health training institutions. There are other institutions we can run the same program with. We don't have to run it with you. But we are family. Whether I like it or not, we are family. And so please, when you go, just tell them that you met a crazy man. <laughs> and he said that whether they cover their head with a basket or bucket or what, he learned it. it has come. And it is even going to change. Somebody came here and said that the virtual space is changing. So the earlier you join, the better you get left out. What next? There's going to be another set of 70 people, 70 institutions that will be coming. And they'll go through the same phase. The other thing is that we also have to train students from your institutions. And that's why my big brother said that we should reduce the number and increase the staff. I was, I was thinking of agreeing with him. But at the same time, <laughs> No, because the students will become a lecturer. We were all students, and we have become lecturers. So we, whether we like it or not, we need to train some students. Uh, we are also aging. They will take over from us. So we need to also build some capacity in that direction. So we'll look at the ratios and see how we go. So that is the next phase of what we are going to do. The other thing I talked about, that we are there. As you implement at your institutional level, we are always ready when you have challenges to do what? To give backup, to provide support. The other thing I want to suggest is that, and I was discussing with my two brothers over here, you can zone yourselves. Zone it. Central, West. After you come for the training, pick your, some of your sharp people within the team and just form form a small team. Let the teams, they can come around and do what we have done. All that the team needs is that if they have a challenge, then KNUST can give them a backup. So they can come here to do a top up and then go back and then teach. When we do that, it becomes simpler for us. Uh, Vota and Easton can decide the team together. Uh, uh, Upper East, Upper West can also pull together. Bono is Bono, pull together. When we do that, we always have uh, resource people available, and every institution was gradually do what? Start coming up. Greater Accra is a big place, but they can also look at themselves, you see. And when we do that, it, I believe that through these approaches, all that we need is that. Uh, the bigger brother, when he gets you, pour it down. And those are the base rules. When you are also smarter than we are, then what it means is that we should learn from you. That, that, that for me, is something that I, I also want to share. But it's not going to end, uh, because for us as a university, we'll continue to write proposals. And what I want to plead with you is that very soon, Proposals, uh, requests for uh, proposals may be put out there. We will start coming to you sometimes so that we start writing proposals jointly. 
When we are doing that, all we are doing is that we are transferring skill so that you also get to know to write some of these things. When you win the money, we work together. This one, we wrote your name in it, but we didn't put you into it. I hope you understand. Yes. The next time, we may write your name in it, but at the same time, we may, it's, it's good we didn't put their name inside. Because NMC would have come. No, I'm, I'm serious. They will say, go to NMC and go and collect a letter. When you go, somebody will be bluffing over there. Go here and go and do that. Go there and go and do that. Here he you. That will matter. Simple. So please, these are the next steps that we are. Then the last thing is that we we'll do institutional visits. This is very important. This project is just for 18 months. But we are hoping that we can push for an extension. Sometimes with the extension, the funding agency will say that they want to come and see what is on the ground. Before they will do what? They will give you that extension. I can't take them to a uh, military hospital. Because as for them, four nights, they have not slept. <laughs> when you go, they cannot say anything better to you. <laughs> but if we will be successful and we can showcase things, we will visit some of you. So we will do institutional visits. Some of the institutional visits, we may come. Others too, maybe we may be coming with the person who has paid for what we are doing. So that you come and see that we didn't lie, we used the money to do what we are supposed to do. So on this note, I once again want to say thank you. Uh, if I say something that is not palatable, forgive me. Oh. Yeah. But, but there, there, are, there, are, there are certain things that I am very passionate about. I, 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 I love Ghana. I, I am a Ghanaian and I love my country. And I think that we are intelligent enough to do a lot of things better than we are doing. I'm a member of the Church of Pentecost. So today we are doing the National Development Conference and we are doing moral mission uh, as part of it. Basically, what it means is that we know what is right. With, the, with God, we should be doing the right things. And so some of the things, some of the things we are mentioning here, things, all of us, we can do better. We can do better. So please impress upon the regulatory bodies, impress upon the associations, and let us forge ahead. And with that, I mean, your institutions, some are degree-running institutions. Seriously. A lot of your institutions are degree-running institutions. But can you run them? No. Why? Why? He said, why can't you run them? You are not allowed. All of you sitting here, all of you sitting here. No, no, all of you sitting here as principals. When you take a decision, it carries more weight. No, it carries more weight. I am telling you, it is just that you have decided not to do what you are supposed to do. That is the truth. Yes. Because next time, one of you would go and be the NMC boss. So we are all killers. Let me have a kind that down moment. Yeah. The yeah, nah, next time we'll do it on our NMC boss. Or for the run degree program and then the two. See, uh, that was our thing there. Yeah. Tell what you hear myself, we are not ready to share. From. I think you'll agree with me, it's been an exciting day. Um, with all the fans that we have, some have received, some are very popular, I'm sure that it will not end here. As Prof said, it's just the beginning, so let's go out and do exploits. Please let's take note of the following announcements. 
there are some payments that will be due you, that are due you, but, but, you need to populate your LMS. Without that, the money won't come. Um, there's a, there's, the list of those who haven't done it yet is quite long, and it's time bound. Please try and do that by the end of the week, before the end of the week. Otherwise, the money won't come. Otherwise, it will not come. Otherwise, it shall not come. It ought not to come. It will never, ever come. Please make sure you have done it. Yes, No, no, not the principals, the participants. The participants. <laughs> not, please, not the principals. They have done their, they finished their work for now. So the participants, please make sure you have populated the LMS. Otherwise, it ought not to, will never, ever, will not, shall not, won't come. And the, there's lunch right from here. We are going to the restaurant down there for lunch. And then at 4 o'clock, we'll come back here for a cocktail. Please don't, please don't, don't leave. Come back and let's finish everything, wrap it up. And so finally, before we leave here, before the closing prayer, we want to invite Ajara to, to give us a vote of thanks. All right. Um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to give vote of thanks for this great occasion. Um, first, and foremost, we cannot say thank you to anybody but to God Almighty, who have helped us and helped our organizers to bring this occasion to a successful beginning, like our chairman rightly said, that even though it's a closing ceremony, this is a great beginning for repurposing our online creation. And I think we cannot say thank you but to say thank, we will have to give thanks to Almighty God for bringing us together and to bring us to this closure. And then secondly, to our able chairman of MasterCard project team, who is the uh, former vice chancellor of KUST. His name is Prof. William Oti Ellis. We say God richly bless you. And we thank you so much for giving us such opportunity. Secondly, to uh, Ms. Mr. Julius Logan Courage, who is a PI, that's the principal investigator for this project. We say God richly bless you. And then Mrs. Kemi, the registrar affiliate colleges. Uh, we say God richly bless you for bringing this uh, great opportunity for us. Again, to our MasterCard e-learning director, our one and only director, one, <laughs> Prof. Eric Ampau Asante, we say God richly bless you for this opportunity. And again, to Miss Hilda Asari, and then Mr. Ebo Arthur and all the great team who have taken us through this journey. In fact, without this great team, I don't think this would have been a success. We say God richly bless the entire team. Again, to our wonderful principals. In fact, you have really helped our colleagues to join us to embark on this great um, um, program, Masterclass, and we hope and pray that we are all going to be ambassadors of change to give or to help um, bring education with our bodies to the entire, not just in Ghana, but to the entire world at large. And I'm sure that is the focus or the aim for. And then we cannot forget our humble and lovely participants, cohort one, cohort two. Yes, they have really, really, really done well. God richly bless you all for making this a lovely interactive session. In fact, I say God bless you all and thank you. And to our media personnel, and to everyone who I couldn't mention the names, we say God bless you all and thank you so much for making this program a success. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So please, on the payments, let me just update. 
TNT will be paid. But what is being withheld is the payment for your uploading on the LMS. Okay. Just in case anyone was confused. That one day, if you don't do it, it won't count. And please, for the, for the principals, your payments are ready. So you shall receive them. Um, Reverend, can I please ask you to give us a closer prayer? Please let's invite a Reverend Father from Spirit and Invest. Please, shall we pray? Almighty and never living God, we thank you for life. We thank you for creation. 